Because it's, it's, never mind. I'll, um, I'll wait. You sure? Yeah, I'm positive. But All yeah, right. I, I, yeah. So we're like, it's heavy. It's heavy. I'll give you that. No problem. So I know I normally start off by asking you all how you're doing. Um, I would love if in three words, if you could describe how you're doing using three words, because I don't want to hear, oh, I'm fine. I'm good. No, I'm all right. I'm pushing through. If you had to use three words to describe how you're feeling, what would those three words be? I'm not surprised. Okay. Chris? Oh, I feel um, hopeful, resilient, and aware. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Mentor? Three, my three words would be Needing my ancestors. Mm. Right now. I'm going to tell you right, right. now. Right now. Right <clears throat> now. Like, let's right, call Beach Boys right now. Because some people, right, they, they're not built like that, Tony. You got to mm. be in that. <laughs> <laughs> hey. No? Three words to describe how you're feeling. Uh, blessed, confused, and just shocked. Mm. I know we're getting together a lot sooner than we probably would have, but the way that this week went about, I just really wanted to check in on you guys and really see how you're doing because it's been one of the craziest weeks that I've ever experienced in my life. Now, I know us coming across, you know, turmoil and opposition is nothing new, but it, I felt oppressed this week. Um, as a matter of fact, let me just recap the week for us real quick. Um, so a Georgia youth pastor claims Black men abducted him, robbed him, just to keep people from finding out that he was in a hotel with the man he met on Craigslist. That youth pastor was um, arrested. So that, that's how we kicked off the week. Then a Florida woman claimed that two black men kidnapped her autistic son only to be charged with his murder because she's the one who got caught on camera pushing him into the canal. Did you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, next was the Karen situation. New York woman in Central Park made a false flagrant foul call to the police and claimed that a black man was attacking her all because he asked her to put a leash, put a leash on her dog, which is what the sign said around the park as well. So it wasn't just him asking her to. It was a well-known rule in the park. And um, since she has lost her job and the dog has already found justice because the uh, shelter picked him up, I think within like 24 hours <laughs> after that video surfaced. So that's a record time. Um, a mini, oh, before we get on the Minneapolis situation, I don't know if you guys saw the black CNN reporter who was doing his job and got arrested on camera after asking the police, you know, where do you want me? Uh, just let me know where we should go because I'm, I'm filming, we're live. And he got arrested on camera quicker than, you know, a murderous cop did. Um, mm -hmm doing nothing uh, so so that also took place and then um the Minneapolis man threatened to call the police but instead called the building manager on a group of black men who were working out in the gym of the building that he leases an apartment in well later he found out that the black men have a lease in that building as well 
So his actions led to the termination of his lease. And then I don't want to say finally, but another instance that happened is the police in Indianapolis arrested a black man and murdered him by keeping a knee on his neck until he passed out, even though he repeatedly stated that he was in pain and he could not. So that was this week's event. Um, now, what pains me even more are the is the news that didn't make the news, you know, the things that happened that weren't on camera or that didn't get reported or that we didn't see. So these just happened to get brought to the light. Um, do you guys know of all of these things happening this week? Uh, half that stuff I did not know about Alicia, but this, I, I was, you know, Will Smith said something on, they put it on Facebook and I loved it. Said racism is not getting worse, it's just getting filmed. Yeah. So everything you just mentioned that happened this week, it's been weeks of this going on. Just yeah. that now people are walking around with the access to a phone and a camera to access it immediately. So this this cauldron of a boiling pot that's been going on for about 500 years now mm -hmm. and just has been getting worse and worse because yeah so i ain't gonna get too far into it. i know we got plenty to discuss but yeah so it's it's that's why i say i'm not surprised because you know, everything that's been happening you know think about it, even if you can go back as far as even Martin Luther king in our modern time mm -hmm. of protesting so think about how many elected officials we've had since then how many presidents we've had since then. And yesterday, or this week, could have been easily marked as a 1950s riot. Mm -hmm. So really nothing has changed since 1950 to 2020. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised at all. It's just been something that's been building and building. Now we have access to show all America, yeah, this is what we've been talking about. Mm. Chris? Well, um, I... <laughs> I agree with Mark because I'm like this. This is the problem. We're always being told that our ancestors died for us to vote. It's not true. Our ancestors died for our freedom mm -hmm. not to vote. And what happens is every four years, you have all these, because I don't call them black leaders, I call them black managers, because behind them is a white liberal. And if you really want somebody to use really fulfill a black movement, you give them whatever resources they have and let them go ahead and lead. Why do you always have to be overlooking monitoring? So my thing is, it's been over four decades of us voting. And what's the ROI on that? Yeah. There's not, there's no ROI on that. But I mean, it's nothing new, like Mark said. Um, we're in acceptance mode, right? Which is where I'm gonna probably some people gonna hate me right now. That's why it really irks me when I hear people just bigging up Obamas. Michelle Obama come out with a new book. Oh my God, Michelle Obama. And I'm trying to think to myself, what did they actually do? What did they actually do for black people? Then black people are gonna say, but what do you want them to do? What do you expect them to? Well, what's the point? What's the mm -hmm. point? The point is you're supposed to be in a certain position to help us, not to just be in the house. There's two mentalities, right? There's a house mentality where I try to be accepted by my oppressor, which I find is very sick. So the closer I get to the house, that's the house slave. The field slave wants to be a part. I want my own thing. I want my own economy. I want my own independent thinking. Now let's think about this. Which mentality has given us the little freedom that we have? Was it the house mentality, the house slave mentality? Or was it the field slave mentality? They had to die and fight back and stand up right for us to get the little freedom that we have right now so what i find right now is with this obama thing and this is we're just in acceptance mode we're trying to be accepted by people over 400 500 years like mark said that hasn't accepted us yet okay yeah right so that's my piece for now 
Okay. Mm. Mentor. Uh, when Colin Kaepernick took his first knee, they asked him, why aren't you uh, praising the flag? Why aren't you kneeling for the national anthem? Why are you disrespecting all of these troops in the military? Why aren't you patriotic? Why, why are you not doing what everybody else in the NFL is doing? And his response is, I'm kneeling to bring awareness to police brutality. He made it specific to police brutality in this country. Young black men are getting killed and there's no consequence for it. Mm. It's, it's crazy how, right, you can see what happened with Trayvon, what happened with Mike Brown, what happened, all types of, because the, the whole I can't breathe statement, we was hearing this for a minute now. Mm -hmm. Right? A couple of them said that, yeah. Let that part marinate for a second. Now, um, someone asked another question, which knee was more powerful than knee that the officer was using or the knee that Colin uh, mm. used. Listen, I don't know if this man was a prophet. I just know that he was necessary mm -hmm. because now that something like this happened, I think Colin kind of subliminally put it in everybody's head to at least mm -hmm. be aware of it. Like we might have we saw it in movies like Boys in the Hood where they take the kids and slam them up on the hood. And we might have mm -hmm. seen it there in the midst of the side, but it ain't really like hit home until people started dying in real life. Recently, I mean, this ain't just started, right? Of course, you know, they've been doing this to us for, for years, but recently we would think that we have made progress in America in 2020 mm -hmm. with technology, with integrated schools, with all of this going on, you would think that the progression in the area of racism would have, you know, Kanye West said it a while ago too, racism still alive, they just be concealing it. Yeah. They concealing it so they can brainwash you. Mm. Um, right now in Dothan, Alabama, there's a farm system where mm. like a prison system, like a real school, the pipeline system, where they are just as young as they can for, Stick a charge on them if they don't have a charge. And they're locking these brothers up. How I know I was in there. Hmm. I was locked up in there. Wow. And I didn't know until I see a whole entire cell block. They said all of those kids in there are under 30 and they're all awaiting prison sentences. And it was D block. And every time they let D block out, they fighting all day, everything. They can't even play. Why? It looked like a bunch of ants or pigs being raised to like kill each other though. Each other. Mm. So this is going on right now in Dothan, Alabama. My view is broad. Y'all know I travel a lot, different states, mm -hmm. different cities. Mm -hmm. um, surprisingly, the south side of Chicago is calm. I want to give my peoples over there credit for that. They calm. <laughs> Atlanta literally started as soon as I left. As soon as I left, yeah, like they were quiet for a little bit. Later that ride started. Yeah. So that's my piece right now. Yo. Um, I definitely want to, and I, I don't know if it's an island thing, but I definitely agree with uh what all the fellas are saying. But I think more towards what Chris was saying. Um, and I actually had this conversation with someone uh, not too long ago about the whole Obama thing. A lot of black people praise Obama, Michelle Obama, and Obama said, oh, Obama this, Obama that. But if you really scratch the surface, Obama ain't do shit for us. And when I say mm -hmm. us, uh, all, he, all, all we could say is he did the Obamacare. And when, you, when, and when that clears, that shit put people in a hole. Mm -hmm. It's expensive. I, I've lost a friend um, to a cop cop killing. I've actually witnessed that. I've witnessed Sunrise Police shooting and killing. Um, God bless uh, Corey, rest in peace. I've seen it. I've seen that happen. And his mama worked for the police department. But because they consider him as mentally ill, which is also Mental Awareness Month, next month, uh, tomorrow, they consider him a threat. So they shot him while he was sitting on the bus on, on, the, on the seat 
in front of the bus station. What? Wow. So yeah, so so I so that that stuff touched home to me, but I definitely gotta agree and say I think black people sometimes, man, my brothers, my sisters, it goes back to the question you asked us on the last show. What do we think when we hear black and we say all said kings and queens? Mm-hmm. But it's too many followers. Mm. There's too many followers um, in the sense of a lot of these things, a lot of people praise Obama, a lot of people praise, you know, certain things, a lot of people praise some of these entertainers, but you're only praising them because you hear it because the social media is putting them in front of you. Mm. You know, um, popular because they're popular. But when you really think about it, we bash Kanye West. And I also had this conversation. I hear you. Everybody throw it around a lot. Say, oh, crazy Kanye, crazy Kanye, crazy this, crazy this, is because social media and the media in whole put that in front of us to make us say, this black man just called y'all slaves, so he's not with y'all black people. He's walking around with Make America Great hat again, so he's not representing the black, but he said it, what just like Chris said, our minds are still trapped in slavery. Not mm-hmm. we're trapped in slavery, but we still have a slavery mind frame. That means we go to work and we praise the white man because they may got something that we don't got. Mm. We let them we let them get away with a lot of stuff because they're the white person. A lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. All right? We're okay with being average because history shows that, you know, we're just, just be happy that we're here. But then mm. you got some of us, and, I, and I, like I said, I think it's an island thing where I, my mama always told me, you're going to always have to work harder than the white man. My mama told me that you don't go to work to make friends. My mama told me be a leader, not a follower. So when I hear Kanye West say, black people, some of our minds are still trapped in in, uh, 400 years of slavery, I I agree with him because some of us still think that we're not leaders. We're not kings, we're not queens. Mm -hmm. All right, and social media puts it in front of us to make us still think little, but we have some strong-minded people that are kings and queens that that know their work know what they belong, know what's right and wrong, and ain't gonna let nobody step to them. And Alicia, we have these conversations where we talk about certain things like that, where it's always about, yo, let's, let's you know, let's, let's, let's get our youth, let's make sure our youth understand. And it goes back to what I was saying, I get our young brothers and our young sisters, I hang with them, because I want them to understand that it's bigger than social media. Put mm-hmm. the phones down, let's go outside and play. Mm-hmm. Let's go to the pool. Let's go walk around the block. Let's throw the football. Let's bring back to what we had as kids, because when we were kids, a lot of this shit was still happening, but we had strong, we had a, a stronger mental. Yeah. Because we knew that, you know what? That's not, that's not on us. Let's go outside and play with our, our friends. You know what? I got to work. I got to go out there and get money for these shoes because mama's working two jobs and I don't want to put mama in no more debt. So let me go get a little car wash job. Let me go cut some yard. What mm-hmm. what the youth right now, the easiest thing you got to do is put it on social media. Mm-hmm. The easiest. And they, and they fall for it. They just do. like the just like the looting right now. It's, Come on, man. Ain't no, ain't no black person starting that looting, man. Right. How we go from having signs up to us busting out windows? And, and, and we're not seeing that, but we see looting, and it, and it kills me that I go on social media and I see some people justifying the looting. Well, it goes a lot to the narrative of the media, too, because looting A is nothing new. Um, when let's say in Pittsburgh, if their baseball team or football team wins, hell, or loses, they loot too. Like, looting happens around sports more than it happens around race, period. Whether it's college, professional, and guess who's starting those looting, that looting? I mean, not to point fingers, but a lot of this looting that's starting, we didn't even have a part of that to Jomo's part. Like, a lot of it is started by other people. But one second, other- one second, Alicia. Let me tell you this. This is the, this I have a problem with. Okay. A lot of black people spend their time worrying about what white people think, mm-hmm. how they view us. Right. For example, they're on TV looting right now. I don't give a crap if they're on there looting because one of the biggest looting was done by them. They stole mm-hmm. countries. Museums stole are filled countries, with their evidence. Stole, stole heritage, stole religion. The biggest thieves on the planet are Europeans. <laughs> so, so why am I 
worrying. What, what I'm trying to explain about, you, is the dysfunctionality of the black race, where we're worried about, let me straighten up, let me get ready. They did the worst atrocities as far as you talk about looting and stealing and doing all that stuff. And guess what? Nobody don't, don't even remember that. This whole system is built on that. So, so why are we worried about, why would you, all right, I have an oppressor oppressing me all the time, right? But yet, I'm worried about what they think. Right. I'm worried about being accepted by them. That is a sick mental state to me. That's my opinion. So when you're saying looting, I don't give a damn if you set up economic situations where we are demarginalized and disenfranchised, what you expect us to do, all right? The lowest education, the lowest, what do you expect? You understand what I'm saying? Why are we worried about how we look to them? They don't give a damn how they look. So to the world, so that's it. It's really us getting back control of the narrative because right, exactly. we can make, make progress, but if they're in control of the narrative, it'll, it won't be communicated. Mentor, I see you at the edge. Go ahead. So, c c control, because controlling the narrative is something that Bill Cosby tried to do. Remember, he tried to buy some TV stations. And whoop, <laughs> it goes his whole past. Everything that he did, Every, you know, so controlling the narrative is very important. I remember um, last show, you asked the question about, uh, you know, what's the first word that comes to your mind? You know, it's a black man. I clearly remember what I said. I said targeted. You mm, remember that? Yep. I said targeted. Um, I felt that way then. I definitely feel that way now. Um, it's a spiritual warfare out here. It really is. Mm -hmm. And it, they're prying on, on people who have mental illness and they want everybody mentally ill because then they can, you know, apply their chaos and confusion on the world. Right. Ain't the demon. It's a lot of different fights going on out here. It's just, it's, it's looking like, you know, um, citizens and police. That's what it's looking like, but it's actually angels and demons. If you um, if you get to know God mm -hmm. and realize that God is who you're gonna need, I, the more craziness we see. At least I learned a lot of different news from you just now. I, I learned I knew a few of those stories, especially the lady with the dog. She, she she was so fake, you know. I wanted to hand her a fake Oscar award for the fake. Right. Yeah. It was crazy. And the, and the dude handled it very, he, he handled it very nicely yeah. and smart and wise. So this is spiritual warfare out here. I um, encourage everybody to, to not latch on to a religion. That ain't what I'm saying here. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is get to know God for yourself. Find out what works for you because from what I see, Growing up and things that I was taught, a lot of this stuff was predicted. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff was written. We starting to slowly but surely see it. Mm -hmm. Just like how they do in the movies where you'll see these movies where everyone's wearing masks year mm -hmm. down. All of this, all of these movies was coming out and, and now it's here. And because the earth is, is spiritually weak right now, mm -hmm. That's why all of this is running rapid. Yeah. That's why it's getting worse. Because the, the enemy feeds on weaknesses. Mm -hmm. If your flesh is weak, if your mind is weak, if your spirit is weak, it comes. And it's gonna, it's a bad, all of these riots and looting because of COVID-19, this is a very bad time for this to be happening right now. Mm -hmm. So it was written. So it was written. And you know, it's true because if you go back to the word, none of this is a surprise. And I think that's where I find my peace in knowing that my creator is not surprised by any of this. Like right. we might be surprised. The FBI might be surprised. 
you know, the news might be surprised, but I find peace in knowing that my creator knows the end from the beginning. And if I knew that this week, my eyes were taken off of him, which is how I knew because I spiritually and just, just my thoughts were shifty. You know what I mean? Like just bouncing from here and there, emotion to emotion. And you know, you're mad. You ain't mad at the building blowing up. But you're mad at the looting. You know, it's like you shift because my focus was, my focus was temporarily gone. But realigning back to the word, like this stuff is supposed to happen. Like it's not, it doesn't make it any better. I'm not saying that it's good. I'm not promoting, I'm not saying any of that. But because of the times that we're in, like it's not like we got a gang of time left. Like if you read the word, like you know, this asked me the other day, you read in Revelations. I told him I do not like reading. I don't like reading it. I don't like reading it. I'll be honest. I don't like reading it. I will pretend like revelations don't exist. But these days, like you can't not read it. Like that is literally the blueprint for what's happening right now. Mark, I'm gonna jump to you. The prediction was for mankind to destroy itself anyway. That's that's revelation in a nutshell. Mm. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, as, as you was just hitting on that. So I, that's why I said I'm not surprised because one thing that I attended the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research and uh, you know, it just means beyond the physical and everything that's happening now is not only written in the Bible and Alicia just let you know, don't be afraid of revelation, believe it. Revelation has already come and gone. So don't be afraid of revelation. Yeah. But uh, you know, but- so you think about, you know, so one of the things our ministers always tell us looking from the top down because right now, if you're in the weeds, you get caught up in the day to day. But if you go up and look at it from his purpose down, it's a common and a peaceful effect. And this is what I mean by that. No other time in history could a president do what uh, Trump is doing and people, he still have a, over 40% approval rate. I think about, and I think uh, it seems like most of you all are familiar with the Bible. Back in the time of Pharaoh, when Pharaoh wanted to let the children of Israel go, and it was three times he actually wanted to let them go, but it said God hardened his heart. Hardened his heart. Hardened his heart, where that he, because he, God said, I have a purpose that I have to run, and I have to run it through uh, mankind. Mm. So right now, this COVID, as you just said, mentor, this COVID, this wasn't by happenstance, mm-hmm. uh, with uh, officers. So, and, and just look at how, again, how his purpose worked. You have a white officer with his knee on the man's neck. Everybody got a cell phone out. Mm-hmm. Now, it, the mentality I think you would have is if you were doing something that wasn't right and somebody was videotaping you, you would kind of hide, stop, or whatever. But what would make you continue when people are gathering, cell phones all over the place, people saying, get up, and you had the audacity to put your hand in your pocket. And I'm telling you that this is being worked on from a much higher level than what we're looking Right now, we're in the weeds and we're looking at black and white police officers, citizens. It goes way deeper than that, way yeah. deeper than that. So that's why I'm at peace. I mean, I, I don't like it, but you're not gonna, you're gonna, you're not gonna like the purpose of Yahweh. You know, mm-hmm. everything about it, you're not gonna like. I don't like, I didn't like the purpose when my mother had to die, but I know that everybody have to meet that date someday. Mm-hmm. So what's going on now? And I think Chris, you hit on it. Um, I, the looting doesn't bother me a bit. I'm like, you know what, go for it. Because uh, we tried to peace for kneeling, you know, you had peaceful riots. We tried communication. We tried this, tried that. So what, what, what's left to get your attention? This is one thing I, I, I wish people understood more as you guys were talking. And, and this is what I love about my Jamaican brother. Because with the mentality that you guys uh, have, you, you guys haven't been in America long enough to be indoctrinated in all this mm-hmm. soft and cuddly you know, I, I love my sister-in-law because she said when she came over and she realized America had a Columbus Day, she said she asked a friend, like, is this the same Christopher Columbus that came and, and raped the <laughs> island? You know, she said, is this, said they, they got a day for him? So I like that when you get a fresh oh, face in to look at a situation that you sometimes when you get caught up, you don't even realize that you're in the bucket. And somebody has to come and tell you, like uh, Chris, like you're saying, sometimes, sometimes somebody has to pull you and say, hey, 
you know you have a slave mentality. What you don't right. even right. and what's worse than having a slave mentality is not knowing you have a slave mentality. Mm-hmm. And for somebody mm-hmm. to come and pull you, somebody come and pull you, tap you on your shoulder, bro. Let me just let me educate you. Not so much as you're being stupid, but you're ignorant in the point that you don't even know. So let me just have you look at this from a different point of view. That's why, Chris, you know, that, that looting, I'm like, you know what, yo, you all have, you know, nothing else has happened, but this is what I was going to say about voting. People think as the president that people only think about voting every four years. That's the worst mistake that we make. It's not the president you need to worry about. You need to worry about all the way from your uh, your sheriff, uh, your commissioner of your city, your the sheriff, uh, commissioner, your congressman, you know, you we Everybody come out to vote every four years, but the damage already been done because Congress is the one that's gonna say yay or nay, make your hard, make the job hard of the president easy or hard. And then do your lawmakers in your local areas, if you're not voting for people that have your your mind of your uh, at least thinking on the level of what you think, you just put anybody in that box, mm-hmm. then you know we're just shooting ourselves in the foot. So it, it, it's it's a long it's a process that's been going on so long, and I don't know how. It, it's ever going to get fixed, and I don't think it will. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. I have only a couple of questions for you guys. This time. So we know life isn't promised to anyone on a daily basis, but do you personally feel fear for your life when you leave your home now? No. Let me answer that right now. No. When you, I don't know if y'all noticed, but recently, you know, I got back to posting. Just got off my prayer, and now I feel like today. I cover myself mm. early in the morning, and it, you got confidence, and then you got it's more of a, a, a blanket of confidence that everything gonna be all right. And I'm protected. And I'm a child of the Most High type of confidence that even when you're being targeted, mm. right? You're being evaluated quickly as you're being targeted. Now, while you're being evaluated, they can see the fear in your eyes. They'll be able to tell right away. And they'll be able to tell if you're ignorant. Meaning if I push this little button right here, I can justify killing you. Mm. They can see that in the person. Mm-hmm. They can also see if you're the type of person that a brush that off of your shoulder and start reading them back some light, uh, some rights and find a way to click something on and go live and start recording their ass. <laughs> they, they can tell if you're that type of person. You know what I mean? It's confidence takes you far. All black people, I want you to, to, to remember this. Walk with your chin and your head held up high because they want you to walk with your face down on the ground. That's mm-hmm. how they want you. Or like Chris said, always seeking their approval. Can't do it. Chris, I know you don't um, fear for your life. I don't, I don't fear. I don't fear. I mean, all of us have been around for a while. So what happens is we get used to this thing. We inoculated to this thing. What my concern is, though, is the younger generation, the younger generation. Like, for example, um, my son and the low generation, you know, early 20s going down. A lot of them are being so dumbed down, mm. right, with the music, with the programming, the TV, all that stuff. We had we had public enemy. We had some stuff. You get what I'm saying? You had Arrested mm-hmm. Development. You had whatever yep. in the 90s era, if you guys know. Shout out to Arrested Development. Though. Like me. But, but I'm saying we had some type of substance. These guys right now are, are doing um, uh, ABC raps, right? Nursery mm-hmm. rhyme, the on lean. The, you get what I'm saying? They're just so gone. They're so lost. So they'll go out there and get in trouble. They'll go out there and get shot because they're not aware of what's mm-hmm. going on. And the first step to me is to be aware. So I'm not worried about me or anybody because we're used to this. This is just a fact that now they have camera and they're showing all this stuff, right? Because of technology, but I'm used to this. But listen, I want to add one thing. To me, protesting, doing all these things, it's not making a difference because we've been doing this from the 60s. 
and I don't agree with the term civil rights. And the reason why I don't agree with the term civil rights and the civil rights movement is because on the books, the by right, the law says we're supposed to have these things. Right. Why do we need extra laws to back up the laws? If you are a citizen, you don't need civil rights. You only need civil rights if you are not really a citizen. You're a second class citizen. White people don't need civil rights because they're a citizen. Mm -hmm. It says it right there. So what happened is they talk through two sides of their mouth. They put it on the books and say, oh, this is what you have. But in reality, who is getting, who is getting oppressed? Who is getting beat? Who is getting thrown in jail? The actual person is demonstrating their legal right. And the discriminator is being protected. So it's hypocrisy. What are we doing? Talking about civil rights movement and have all these so-called black leaders uh, every day talking about civil rights movement. We, we're having civil rights movement for over four decades now. And what? Where, really, uh, where are we? So I just believe that we need to establish an economic base. Mm. The WACP is full of crap because they are being run by Jews and the stipulation funded by Jews. And the stipulation is that we cannot establish an economic base. You do not see yeah. any of these so-called black leaders pushing us to establish an economic base. And we are the most powerful as far the as- The most- You better talk that talk, the biggest. This is the case, this is the case. If we do not establish an economic base like Martin Luther King was saying economic assassination Marcus Garvey was saying economic assassination Malcolm X was saying economic assassination before Jesse Jackson came down and watered down the whole thing with the rainbow coalition right <laughs> so if, if, if we do not accept if we do not pursue <laughs> economic um uh, an economic base what is going to happen is all of this is going to be nothing but yeah. a fleeting illusion to be pursued, but never attained. Mm. Yeah. Chris, I'd like to add one thing on to that. Mm -hmm. So you were just saying about economic, uh, 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 ec economic uh, base. Equal, yeah. uh, base, right? Mm -hmm. And for some reason, like you just saying, it started way back with Malcolm X, Marcus Garvey, uh, Malcolm X, uh, Martin Luther King, but the people haven't, we, we're so quick to allow somebody to come in and just, uh, well, let me give you, I don't know how to say it, but to come in and just quickly make you uh, forget all about that was even being said. Cause like you say, that, this is not the first time we talked about this. And this was something that somebody even brought out. And this was brought out back in the seventies. And I didn't, I didn't realize it. People <laughs> saying that black athletes, uh, there was a movement to tell black athletes do not, go to Notre Dame, um, don't go yeah. to all these big Ivy League schools, go to these black universities. Right now, college football, of college athletes, football, basketball, the major sports, consists of almost over 55% black athletes. If they were to take their talents to HBCUs, it would be, that would be one economic downfall that would just uh, catapult these colleges to another level. Yeah, but for some reason, even though it's being spoken and people saying it, people have been preaching it for almost five or six decades now. It's not being filtered down to the people that need to hear it, such as us. Uh, I, well, by the time it gets to us, it's being watered down, and we we accept something else. Yes, sir. We're not willing to sacrifice like the uh, those back in the sixties and fifties was willing to sacrifice themselves, but we're not willing to sacrifice that. So by the time it gets down to this level. We're willing yeah. to accept something else, but that has been talked about for so long, and that, that's mm -hmm. the thing I would really love to know. Like, at what point does it does, do people stop listening and like, uh, I, you know, I'll just take the University of Miami scholarship over Johnson Smith University. Mm. Nice. Nice. That's a great yeah, point. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, great point. Joe.
Jordan. Um, I definitely respect um what everybody's saying, and uh, you know, I agree to it because everybody's entitled to you know their thoughts and belief. But a lot of the things, you know, me personally. You know, I don't give a fuck about it, to be honest with you. I'm not a politician. I'm not worried about what this person or what that person doing. I'm worried about what I can do for change, what I can educate people on doing for change, what I can say, you know, when things come around. Um, and I think that's that's the thing. I, uh, I was born in Jamaica, uh, 84, came to America in 89, 90. So I've been in America a long time to really see what's going on. But I also know America is full of hypocrites. Mm. And it's a lot going on and this is why a lot of these things are still going because we can have the brother and the sister speaking that shit to us over the phone social media but when it's time to act what are you doing and that's why I don't really put my put my mind into a lot of things that people are saying or what they're doing I can just focus on what I can do what I can do what I can teach our youth what I can teach my friends who I consider my brother I don't call my friends friends I call them my brothers I don't look at them no differently. I don't. I don't. I don't judge them. I don't. I got I, my best friend is a janitor, but I look at him as the greatest of all time, just because I know he's a black man in this world trying to make ends meet for his family. Mm-hmm. He's not out there robbing and stealing. He's not out there, you know, selling drugs. He's not out there doing things, you know. And I'm not knocking how people get their money, but he's doing something to make sure that his son understands that no matter no matter you know if you don't have you're not in the office you may not be making six figures but you're finding a way to feed your family and you'll find that you'll you find a way to do it the right way so that's that's just how I feel about it but I do respect everything that everybody's saying and we are living in crazy times but we we gotta change that we can't expect Jesse Jackson Martin Luther King whoever we just named to change that we gotta change that mm-hmm. so when we see people about all oh, this and that, don't don't respond to it. Don't entertain it. Look past it. When social media put something out that says something about oh this is going on or this, look past it. When you walk, when you see the Gucci store in front of you, walk past it. Don't go in the Gucci store and spend your money with them because all you're doing is feeding into what you said you're not gonna do mm-hmm. because they don't give a fuck about us, right? Absolutely. This form right here. This form right here. Huh? No, I agree. I agree with you, you know, with the action part and all that stuff. But I do mm-hmm. believe, and even if you look in the Bible, word is more important than you think. Because word manifests the action. So this mm-hmm. action that you're seeing from black people is because of words, right? Words programming. All right, let me give you an example. You guys mentioned earlier, right? Your Jamaican and Mark's island people and so forth, right? Our mentality is different. Now, the reason why the island people, because I got into something with one of my island friends because he was looking down on the black Americans, right? Because the mentality is, oh, I'm staying in the hood. When I came in here in the eighties, I'm driving the old car, I'm putting rims on it. I'm not trying to move to a better neighborhood. I'm not trying to do all these things. So Mm -hmm. he's looking down on them for that. But if you don't look at your history, you're not gonna know what's going on because in the islands during slavery, what the slave master used to do is after a certain hours, he gave the slave a a, a piece of land and said, go and work on it and that's yours. Mm -hmm. That never happened here. Right. They are more beat down here than anything else, any part in the world. Mm-hmm. So when the mentality is like that, so for in, our, in other words, in order for you, for them to accept the message, Joe, because you will tell them all day, you know, they just be like this, but they have to know where they're coming from to rationalize. If you do not know where you're coming from and you do not know your greatness, right, before slavery, right? Which is the Bible, by the way, because the Bible was situated in Africa, not Europe, okay? That's where we're from. And if you know your greatness, you're going to feel greatly about yourself and you're going to accept the message. But you could tell them all day long, Joe, that this is what you're supposed to do. If if they do not feel a certain way, a superior way about themselves, 
they'll never accept it because they are they have an inferior inferiority complex right now. All mm -hmm. black people have an inferiority complex right now, and they mask that with material things. Mm -hmm. This that uh, the, the white person, the Chinese person, they wear a New Balance and some Jordash jeans, and guess what? They feel like somebody. For a black person to feel like somebody, I gotta get new Jordans. I gotta get me a whole lot of gold. The reason why is because you don't feel like somebody mm. unless you have it, because you've been beaten down so long. So that's why I'm saying words. Once you get that word into your head, you plant a seed, and then from mm. there, it manifests something else. But that's why I said mm -hmm. earlier we need to learn about ourselves before captivity and slavery. Mm -hmm. right. And I definitely agree with you with that, Chris, man. My, fa my favorite line to tell everybody is pray. Have faith. You know, have faith. When you start doing things out of pocket, that means you lost faith. So everything that you spoke about, the Lord and all those things that went out the window that easy. So you never believed in the long thing. My, I tell a lot of people this and they laugh at me, man. I tell them, I say, I was put on this world not to be, be the greatest of all time, but to make everyone believe. Mm. Believe a God. Believe that you do get blessings. Believe that only the strong survive. When things come around and things happen, that's to throw stones at us. And it's to see what are we going to do after that. You're your greatest person when you get knocked down and get back up. Some of us get knocked down and we stay down forever. Because they don't know the history of being resilient. Mm -hmm. Like if they, if they knew where they came from and their ability to overcome... It's almost like mm -hmm. spinach to Popeye. You know what I'm saying? It gives you that mm -hmm. extra ammunition to say, oh, snap. Like, I heard of this before, and they overcame, and I'm no different. Wait, wait. Until they digest it, they won't. Mentor. I, I, I got to piggyback. Mm -hmm. I was waiting for the right time to come in. You you nailed it. I remember being entertained and, and, and uh, watching and being uh, fascinated by Thug Life and everything that DMX was doing, and I was doing, and I'm watching the movie Belly, and my my train of thought didn't go real, real, real deep until now. I said, "Let's go to Africa." Mm. When he said it, now every all that other stuff that the movie was doing entertaining me went out the window. <laughs> Let's go to Africa now. Um. My brother Akon. Akon was locked up. They wouldn't let him out. Right here in America, right? So he's locked up and, they, and they, he's a talented, talented individual, right? Akon. So he, gets out, he gets out, he's singing his ass off. He comes out with all of these hit songs. He signs Lady Gaga, which means yeah, he doesn't no, have look, to work another. No, hold, hold on, don't finish the story, right? So Akon of <laughs> Starts planting seeds where? In Africa. Africa. Then he starts giving, bringing light to the people that sit. Hold on. He dropped how much millions? Yeah. Give how many millions of people light? Power in Africa? Yeah. Wait a minute. What is he doing? Yeah, that was dope. What is he doing? Right? So, out of, look, you got kings, queens, followers. Look, everybody going to find their own path. A true leader gonna stand out and do something the way you go, whoa, maybe this person right here really, really, really does have the right idea out of everybody. Mm -hmm. So Akon is literally, it, it, I guess it's not ready yet, but they're building it. He's building a city for us in Africa. I remember him telling people, as I saw it in the meeting, y'all need to start buying real estate in Africa. Mm. He ain't elaborate, mm -hmm. he just put that point out there right there. Because we need to go back to our well. What does it sound like? Oh. We need to go back to our roots. Maybe we're getting our ass shot and choked and hung and all of that here for a reason. Everything happened for a reason. Press the bus very... Press the might push your ass somewhere else, and it might be yeah. happening. You know, that thought actually came to my mind this week. I was like, okay, I need to create a five-year exit plan because the way the U.S. is set up, I'm looking at Jason KK, and I'm like, I don't, like, I can't keep having these same stories for y'all. And I literally thought about, like, what it would be like to live somewhere where you belong. None of us can say, 
unless it's Jamaica where, you know, that's your roots. But none of us living in America can really honestly say like, man, I belong here. I remember my aunt told me a couple years ago after she visited South Africa, she said, and she's Jamaican, born and raised in Jamaica. She said when she got, when she got off the plane in Africa, that it was this overwhelming sense of being home. She said she ain't never been there before, but she felt at home. Nowhere in the United States can make us feel like that. That's, that's what she said, and she's Jamaican, right? So it, that thought came to my mind this week where I was like, I, I would not be mad at, at going somewhere where I belong. I'll just say it like that. No, I had the right idea. That's all I'm trying to say. Alicia, that's actually my exit strategy right now is to go yeah. to Jamaica and retire because this is what I said. I want to be a first class citizen. There is no, there, we have a lot of us in Jamaica, okay? Where I can go and bar hop and do what I want to do and the police is there to protect and serve. We don't have any of that here. It, anywhere we go to have anything like that, police is going to be there to harass you. And if we want to live that lifestyle, that means I'm going to have to hang with white people on Las Olas. Okay? It still don't mean you're safe. No, but my point is, even if I want to get a taste of that life, that's how I would have to be doing it. I would have to be hanging with them because we don't have our own. Yeah. Any gathering here? So that's the reason why I looked and I said, in order for me to be a first class citizen, I would have to go to Jamaica or somewhere else, you know? Maybe Africa, I don't know Africa, but that's the closest thing, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? For me to not be harassed for my color. Yeah. That, that's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. I'm, I'm gonna shift gears all the way up. Um, and for those of you who are tuned in with us, A, thank you. We appreciate you being here with us and we look forward to your input, your questions, your comments, the whole nine. But I want you all to join in on this too, along with the fellas. Let me give you five different things. And you tell me which one, if you could, um, which one you would work on first. They're all areas that need improvement. They're all a mess. But which one do you think would need to be worked on right now? So first one is mass incarceration. Second one is gentrification. Ooh. Miseducation. Ooh. Police genocide, Oof. access to wealth. Oof. Which one, and I'll repeat them, and for the folks in the chat, let us know your opinion as well. Access to wealth, police genocide, miseducation, gentrification, mass incarceration. Now I know my single ladies are gonna say, mass incarceration, let them out because we need our men available. <laughs> They don't go say first. let them out, <laughs> but um, I'm curious to know who wants to go first. Me. All go right, on. go ahead, Victorious. Because the other one surrounding miseducation is so fantastic, I almost went somewhere else, mm -hmm. but I'm going with miseducation first. Okay. Definitely. Definitely. Reason being, reason being, um, Satan, the devil, or Bad energy, bad spirits, whatever you want to label it, right? It's a master of disguise. Mm. Whoever the president is, master of disguise. They cannot trick you. They cannot fool you unless they are coming across as something that's helping you. That's the only power they have over you. So if they, if they take your books away, if they take your knowledge away, which is impossible now because of the internet. The internet just leveled the playing field for anybody who has a thirst for knowledge. But miseducation is something that they've been using since the beginning. If you can't read, you can't do nothing. <laughs> you can't do nothing if you're misinformed, you're, you're, far, you're so far behind the eight ball that by the time you catch up to the wealth, to, to already being incarcerated, to, by the time you catch up to all of that stuff, now you're in there trying to get the proper education. So if you're misinformed, you done lost the battle before it even started. Mm. 
right. I, I, I have to join up with mentor now. I, I was going back and forth between uh, incarceration, mm-hmm. but there's no need to pull out those who are incarcerated by, uh, you know, by no part of their own for whatever reason. And if they're not educated, now you just got a bunch of uh, incarcerated, uh, 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 free people who are still incarcerated. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> uh, the wow. miseducation, yeah. and this is something I, I'll share with you guys because, of, again, I'm always just thankful for the mercy that Yahweh has bestowed upon me. Uh, the Bible, King James Version. If we even understood who King James was mm-hmm. yeah. and how did the name <laughs> of Jesus Christ mm-hmm. get into the Bible itself? And how we, uh, I know I grew up, my mom uh, had a picture of Jesus on the wall of the long-haired, blue-eyed white man, and how that we've taken that, I mean, we've accepted that to be true. We've taken the the Gregorian calendar that have us starting the year off with January, when actually in the Bible itself, the first year of the month, first month of the year was April. So when we're talking about miseducation, we have to go back. I mean, we have to put it up from the roots, not just from the tree. You know, my dad always, uh, when we got uh, cut in the yard, he would get crazy if he saw us cutting a weed. He like, because if you're not going to put it up for the root, you're, you're just, just gonna wasting your back. time. Mm-hmm. It's just going to grow back with some yeah. friends. <laughs> so <laughs> he bringing friends. So miseducation goes so deep. And I, I, I agree with my man, I think Joe right here. Uh, uh, religion, if religion, if the basis, if the base of everything you believe is not uh, God, is not a, 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 a belief in your heavenly father or salvation, then everything built on top of that, I don't know how sturdy that's going to be, but you have to have a firm foundation. Now, I'm not saying you have to join a religious sect, but <laughs> what is it, what is it, where, where is your mind when we talk about spiritual sal- spirituality or salvation? Where do your mind go? Mm. I think about, because, you know, I think about, uh, again, with the miseducation, I think about if you put Michael Jordan, uh, Jay-Z, Oprah, and who else, and, and who else is a big money maker out there, Black? Actually, that's it. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go with those they three. Have money between the three of them. You know, they have enough money that they <laughs> could literally change so much. But why is it that we have these... Uh, of blacks that's in power that that has plenty of economic uh, power, mm-hmm. and they're in position of someone who would listen to them. Mm-hmm. Why why aren't they putting themselves in a position of, you know what? Let me let me go down to the uh, roots and help some people up, and I mean really make a change, and not just saying stuff. And Chris, I agree with you saying the words, but like okay, you speaking it, but then your actions do nothing. You so know, and I think a so- lot of them. And I, hell, I don't know what they're doing, but I, some of their cases, they might feel like because they're funding it, you know, that they don't have to maybe get their hands dirty. Like but sometimes see, that's, that's, it's like, I kind of just throw money at it, like, all right, here's money to fix the legal problems with people. What, yeah. about, what about fighting to get that whole reform? <laughs> and see, that's what I'm saying, Alicia, is that a lot of yeah. times they'll say, like, Michael Jordan. They'll say he, he well, does Well, he doesn't help anybody. <laughs> well, you, well, you'll hear them say, well, he does not stuff behind the scenes. He, he donate behind the scenes. I'm like, well, why are you behind the scenes? Yeah. Why, right. why don't you step up front with your face and your money? Because that'll mm. be a much more powerful message than you <laughs> donating money behind the scenes. Well, I don't want to mess up my brand or whatever the right. case may be. Right. So, yeah, that would definitely be miseducation. Because mm. Jordan, be Jordan be feeling guilty about the million that he lost in the casino in the Bahamas. They be talking about yeah. him in the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. They like that. They like that nigga don't tip. Whenever they see Jordan, he never tip. Oh man, don't get me started on Jordan. <laughs> Listen, I've always been a Jordan fan, but that last dance got me like, oh. <laughs> you know, you know why I was never a Jordan. I tell you why I don't like. Not that I don't like him. I don't respect him as a black man because in the time when growing up, when people was killing people in New York over Nikes, he never stepped forward and said, "Hey, you know what, Nike, you all will not be selling my shoes for one hundred and eighty dollars." He never said a word like, you know what, I'm good. He never said a word about stopping that violence. And people was, I mean, people were literally killing people, beating up kids for a pair of Nikes. Yeah. And he never stepped forward to me as the name of that brand and say, you know what, 
No, Nikes are now down to sixty five dollars a pair. So everybody can wear a pair. So, so yeah, that's all I got about Jordan. But he's a great basketball player. He, I mean, that's a whole nother session. Yeah, yeah. So let me, Chris and Jomo. Do I need to repeat the five? Um, yeah, repeat. It. Okay, mass incarceration, miseducation, gentrification, police genocide, access to wealth. So I just jumped to the chat and I see some people are saying access to wealth. I did see that some people are agreeing with um, Chris and um, Mentor and Mark about miseducation. So curious to know, what are you, if you could fix one problem right now, what would it be? Um, boy, this one kind of hard uh, between indoctrination and um, and, and incarceration. Um, uh, I, what I've been talking about anyway is pretty much um, education. the education part of it, right? Which is knowing yourself, knowing where you're from, so you can love yourself, you can know your power, you can know who you are. Because mm -hmm. once you start to love yourself as a black man or a black woman, right? Then you're gonna start to love your brothers and sisters as well mm -hmm. have that respect. when you have that respect for yourself your race you're going to respect everybody else in the race you're not going to want to kill them you're not going to want to hate on them as much as you do but just let me say this about um mass incarceration the reason why i want to say this is because i heard them on <clears throat> like a couple years ago with the child separation talking about oh my god they're child separating and all these liberals right Mass incarceration is child, is child separation, right? That is creating a broken home, mm -hmm. right? Which stems with all these desperate choices that mm -hmm. these young black men <clears throat> have to make with, with, with an absent father in the house. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but so, they've been breaking up our families since They've been breaking slavery. up our families <laughs> since slavery because you ever watch Color Purple, in case some people don't know, the first thing they did was to separate Whoopi from her kids. She spent the whole show, the whole movie, trying to find her kids because there's no internet and there's no internet. <laughs> there's none of that. So it, so she was even, even blessed enough to actually see them in her old age a lot of people didn't see their kids anymore. You can imagine you don't see your kids anymore. You dropped off in a continent. So when I hear them being appalled on TV about, oh my God, child separation, they're talking through two sides of their mouth. Because when they're saying, oh, this is bad, and I'm sorry about this, but every second they get, they're praising their slave masters, they're praising the constitution, and what gets to me with, with, with black people with constitution is, how can you be up there talking about your constitutional right when article something in the constitution say we are three-fifths of a human? Mm. So how it's crazy to me when you hear talking about my constitutional rights. Did you look at the constitution? It, the constitutional rights is not for you. You're mm. three-fifths of a human in the constitution. So you're not fully a human. You are mankind. I hear Mark say mankind earlier. Sorry, Mark. I'm not mankind. I'm man. Mankind is kind of a man. Mm. And that's not me. <laughs> so you're full man. Not huh? Somebody not else, but I won't go into that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, something, that Chris, something that Chris just said remind me of something Denzel said when that uh they said, Denzel, how you feel about getting this Oscar? He said, look at it. That thing don't look like me. It don't look like me or you. Look yes. At it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember so like that. Oscar. Oh, yes, <laughs> Joe? Um, definitely gonna go with mis miseducation. And um, a lot of things that we that we're saying, uh, we proved the point of miseducation. One of the greatest CDs to ever come out was called The Miseducation of Lauren. Lauren Hill. Hill. My man. And, and Lauren Hill, she spoke nothing but the truth in there. Awesome. She, she, she reminded us as black people that we're beautiful, especially the ladies that were powerful, and we're not going to sit for that. So I say that to say this, and it goes back to the whole Michael Jordan thing. Um, we're talking about, we're, 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 we're saying Michael Jordan isn't stepping up in sense of why are we waiting for Michael Jordan to step up? 
Why we? If you want to be honest, him and LeBron basically said the same thing. Michael Jordan put a statement out today saying he saw for the black people. LeBron did the same thing. But what, why are we waiting for them to step up when we have the platform ourselves? Yeah. To step up and, and, and make that change. Mm-hmm. I actually agree with Joe because I, a lot of I, times I, on social media, it's like we're waiting for the next Martin Luther King to show up versus being who we are supposed to be in this fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like if we all put on our armor, whatever that looks like, whether it's through counseling, whether it's through mm-hmm. coaching, whether it's through creating a forum where people's voices could be heard, whether it's spitting a poem, like it doesn't matter what your armor looks like as long as you put it on and get out there. I think a lot of us are kind of like, well, why ain't you, why your armor ain't on? Why, mm-hmm. why, why, no. why you ain't doing nothing? And so like this, like know, this right here, this thing right here, this is powerful. This is what I was gonna say, Joe. I agree mm-hmm. with you. This we're actually doing it right now. Mm-hmm. And it's just planting a seed because a lot of people don't know because it's not mm-hmm. available to them. And let me just say this: what annoys me more than anything else is that, and I'm not gonna say this because a lot of people are gonna think, oh, Chris, you you're anti-college. I went to college, I went to college for four years. What annoys me more than anything is an educated black person. Mm-hmm. Because they have, have created restrictions where they cannot receive wisdom. Mm. Because the first thing they're going to do is this, which you see on any panel, when you look at um, MSNBC, CNN, the first thing they do before they, 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 um, introdu- they, when they're introducing That's the panel, they, they have to state their credentials. Right. So if mm-hmm. I... I'm not having a bunch of credentials. They shut me off yeah. right here and then. Now yep. they realize a lot of stuff that you're learning is indoctrination. Right? <laughs> so, and these are the ones that we tend to look up to and go, oh, look at this person, look at this mm-hmm. black person, because they got a seat at the table, but they're actually doing a disservice to us. Mm-hmm. Because they're regurgitating all the foolishness that they want us to, 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 to learn or whatever the case may be. So a lot of my wisdom comes from people who actually never went to college mm-hmm. because they're not within that boundaries. So their mind is that more bubble. open so they can accept, right? My father, I don't even think him finished high school. I don't even remember, right? <laughs> and <laughs> my, my, my brother, I have a PhD. I went to college. My mom is educated, right? And he's the wisest one in the house. <laughs> you see what I'm <laughs> the most profound stuff comes out of his mouth. Yeah. Because he's not restricted. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? Bob Marley is not, wasn't restricted. He said, open your eyes and look within. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Open your third eye. Please take the red pill and come out of the matrix. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, just to... And, just but, to, and you know that, what? That's, that's crazy you know, that... No I'm matter who... Finish. That's crazy that I'm going to spit a poem called Third Eye on mm. my third album called Red or Blue Pill. Wow. <laughs> Chris is a prophet. That's the one I'm doing Yeah, tonight. Chris is a pro- prophet, Chris. Mm. Mm. That's what I'm Chris. doing tonight. That's crazy. Nice. Yeah, like I, like I was saying, man, we, 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 we did this thing where we're talking about who can speak up. But when you talk to like like the one thing like, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that really gets to me. And, it's, and I think it's sometimes, and like Chris said earlier, the island thing where we look at Americans, we're like, like, why? We have brothers want to be Scarface. <laughs> and John Gotti. Don't and John Gotti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fictional characters. Scarface is an actor. He's not even real. But we put him in our raps. Oh, like Scarface, like this, like that. And it's like, okay, this is what we're feeding the youth. And these are the people that we're looking to step up to teach our youth. But, but I'm a big Jay Z fan. I listen to Jay Z because Jay Z's rapping about, from what I've heard, what he really went through. DMX before he went crazy, he talked about what he was going through. I'm a Jeezy fan. Jeezy talking about what he did, but as soon as Jeezy start talking the positive, or Jay Z start talking the positive, they're sellouts. They're commercials. Mm. But this is the thing, Joe. Like he said, we're at different times right now. I'm not that same person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I've evolved. So I'm not talking about slanging bricks and, and flipping and flipping all these things because I'm not doing that anymore. I'm so not I'm doing that. My reality has changed. 
But you see all these rappers, oh, we drinking that lean, we flipping that purple, we got these bricks. But realistically, you're not doing it. Right. He hasn't said anything yet, but he's one of the smartest black men that we know because he showed black people that you can advance yourself if you bet on yourself. So he doesn't have to say anything. He's going to put out chips. He's going to put out some soup. He's going to show you, hey, this is what you can do as a black man. This is what you can do as a black person. And I think a lot of times we miss those things because they're not on CNN rallies. I think it go beyond that, Joe, because first of all, number one is this. I'm not surprised if uh, black people are glorifying um, Scarface and he's not even black because the first, the first, the f all right, just look at the first order here is we are told that our God is European and white. And when you look in a lot of black churches, that's what you see. And that's why it say you have to be rooted in the word. Because when you actually look in the word, in the book, it says none of that. Mm -hmm. If you look at the geographic location, it does not say I went from Britain to Ireland and then Christ went from there to there. None of that says that. It, it says burnish brass, color skin, wool here, Solomon, Sons of Solomon chapter one says, um, black and comely, right? All of that stuff. But yet, these theologians, these pastors who are supposed to know all of the Bible still mm -hmm. put a white Christ figure up there knowing it's a lie. Now, if you can make your God white, anything, you will, you will glorify anything that's white. You see what I'm saying? Because you're told, I am told by people that when I say Christ wasn't white when he was here, I blaspheme. They told me that I blaspheme. I'm blaspheming. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So that what we had done to us is a lobotomy. Like I hit your sketch. Yes. You just wipe out everything and then put what you want. So I am not surprise that they're going to look up to Scarface because right now you look up to and like Mark was saying the King James version right and they said Jesus and all these things and I asked I said this is what I asked Christians oh they don't they're not rooted in the word I said do you know how old the letter J is the letter J is 500 years old Christ oh. was here over 2,000 years ago how is his name Jesus how? If J, you Google it right now, the letter J is 500 years old. Do the math. It's still Christ. I'm a, I believe in Christ. You get what I'm saying? But you mm -hmm. have to be rooted in the word. You if you're not rooted. rooted in the word and know your history, know where you're coming from, you're not going to know who you are and you're not going to know where you're going. But mm -hmm. people need it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah, we're right. definitely we're definitely weak minded, man. I, I I've been in the system. I, I haven't been in the system for years or months, but I've been there enough time to understand that that's not where I want to be. Yeah. And too many times we see the same people going out the system, getting back in the system because they have a weak mental. Mm -hmm. They 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 getting out of jail and going right back to the block. Yeah, they they don't know who they're supposed to be. No, they know who they're supposed to be, but they don't want to feel that truth. They don't they don't want they don't want they don't want that truth. Yeah, they you know who they're supposed to be. Well, all we let me tell you something. A woman is the most powerful human being that we can. And all our women teach kids, this is who you're supposed to be. This is what you're supposed to do. But sometimes they don't want to do that. Yeah. Oh, they want to follow what they see on TV. They want to follow the drug dealer in the neighborhood that we don't know what he's doing. We don't have to get this money. All we see is he has the flashy car, the nice clothing, and the jewelry, and you want to go out there and you think that's what he's doing. But realistically, that drug dealer probably advanced themselves and they went and they opened businesses. They put their money into youth centers. They put their money into different things to where their money multiplies. But they don't see that because they're weak-minded. Google my name every, every other week I Google my name. I don't do it because I don't know because because I want to because I like doing it. I do it to remind myself that Jomo means flaming spear. 
So whenever somebody says my name or whenever I go out somewhere, whenever I do anything, I remember that I'm a flaming spear. Bop, bop. I'm saying it's going to be <laughs> Booyaka. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let me, okay. Question. Flaming spear. Chris How do you... <laughs> Shut up, Chris. Christopher Columbus. <laughs> All right, so switching gears a bit, how do you explain to our young black children what's going on and how to press forward? Tell them about mm -hmm. their history. Tell them that we have always endured this. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time that we are, uh, 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 you know, uh, somebody was, oh, somebody was just uh, putting something about um, how, you know, what Joe was just saying about how that they've tried to destroy the black man's mentality mm -hmm. because you know they looked the, they looked at Egypt and they saw that Egypt was a to this day we're still using things in mathematics and science that was started in Egypt in mm -hmm. um, uh, back in Egypt so they had to come up with plans on how can we just mentally because uh, we can't get them physically because physically we've always been superior people but mentally if I can get into your mind. I oh, got you. it's a, yeah. It's so a wrap. it's the it's the uh, it's the whole old elephant in the circus, you know, trick. So the elephant, when it's a baby, they tie it to a chain to a stick, mm -hmm. and as that elephant grows, they take the chain off and put a rope, way to the point where you can just put a thread on the elephant's neck, tied to a, a stick, and he won't know that he has the strength to pull away from it because you just mm. mentally. Yep. Just mentally destroyed. He's been conditioned, yeah. Been, yeah, you been so mm -hmm. think about how long blacks have been conditioned. This right. why, and this reason why I brought out Oprah, Michael Jordan, and all of them. Not that we're looking for them to be leaders, but just think about it. you got all this money and power and economic uh the ability to do some things, but mentally you probably think you can't because I I I can't do it. I can't I don't mm -hmm. have the ability to do it. You're that elephant that's been tied to that 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 thread. So <laughs> Uh, you know, so there's one thing that I, I uh, okay, Alicia, I forgot the hell I was talking about. What, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> what would you tell like, the young people? How do you explain okay. it? You did good. So, you did to good. the young people, yeah, so to the young people, young people are moving forward, yeah. So, tell them about their past, have to educate them on where they came from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's and that because if you don't, and I think Chris said, if you don't know your past, then you probably don't know what you can do and what you're capable you of. You, don't. you know, so, I was yeah. raised, I was raised in Denver and I learned nothing about Black Wall Street. Yeah, I like your jersey, Jomo. Thanks for the representation. Great, great timing, great timing on that. Jo. Great, right, great ah. plug, great plug. However, comma, through all my schooling, I learned nothing about Black Wall Street. It wasn't oh. until I was damn near an adult that I learned about Black Wall Street, y'all, like, 600 plus businesses and mm -hmm. and private airplanes and grocery yep. stores and banks and doctors and our own flourishing community do you know what that would have did to me as like a young person knowing that, that they happened? know exactly what it was what it would have done to you that's why they eradicated it out of the school system absolutely out of the school system so how do we still let them know what's what like we can't depend on the schools to teach them like we need to let them know because that, that's the that's the biggest thing a, leash imagine we're getting a black schools. kid in the ninth grade letting him know of black wall street and how mm -hmm. dope it was and how possible it is again and he'll go through high school with a different type of mission to give to have that you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like don't go off of what you see in these videos and what social media is telling you is hot. Think about owning your own and having your own. Like I didn't know about stocks and investments and all this other stuff that people pass down to their kids early or even put in their name early. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't know about half of that stuff. And I know we talked about that last session, but whatever we teach our kids, like along with their history on where they came from, if we add that Black Wall Street element, like, it, hey, Alicia, it adds a lot of volume. Chris? Alicia, don't feel bad that you're just learning this. Because let me tell you something. You're not a worst case scenario. You're, 
best case scenario because a lot of people go through life not even knowing any of this at all. And this was like in the 1890s. But what I would say is for the kid, just to, to go on with your question, move along with your question. Um, the first thing I would do is, well, it's a couple things, right? Two prong. I would open up my Bible and I would show my child from a young age, this is us. Mm. Look at the geographical location, right? Even though on the news they're saying Egypt and Morocco is in the Middle East, right? I'm going to show you that it's in Africa. Right, it's in the northern portion of Africa. So all of this is us, mm. right? Just to make sense, they're from Europe, we're from Africa. The Bible is situated in Africa, okay? That's one. Two, I would teach my kid, uh, get them a financial IQ. Because if you notice in school, they, they teach us everything besides finance. Mm -hmm. and, and that's a strategy to that. Because the people who knows and have the financial education, they teach their kids over the dinner table. Yep. It's not shared, right? Because you, because a trickle-down economy, you're not supposed to have this knowledge. So that's what I would teach my, my child. You understand stocks, whatever you're saying, and then we'll go on from there. But I think the root of it is when you let a child know that all of this, these stories in the Bible are from Africa, and that's you, that's Africans, your self-esteem builds up from there. You see what I'm saying? And then you can go into the other stuff, you know what I mean? Um, yes. Bukati, Tuskegee, agriculture, all this stuff. But I just believe it start right there, and that's it. Mm. Mm. Okay, Joe, mentor. Yeah, I think what? I think definitely, um, and it's crazy, man. Like I, I, I have these are the conversations I have. I was just having a conversation with uh, with one of my friends the other day about the same thing. It's like why, why don't why people we don't educate people on stocks? I didn't find out just like you, Alicia. I was I didn't get into stocks until somebody really sat down in my later years and said, yo, you know, this is what it does. I, I had that mindset of, no, I'm not putting my money. I'm not, I'd rather keep my money in the bank and let it grow from there, but not really understanding what stocks are, where you have the, the white family or what we like to say, the, the proper black person, they're teaching their kids, oh, okay, this is the family business. This is how you make your money invest. But then you take it to, to, to like the, the ghetto or the hood, and they're not teaching their kids that. Listen, we thought we were doing good by being in a partner. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and just realizing, like, man, you got to invest. Uh -huh. so conversations now is about stock. Like, I catch myself looking at stock. I'm like, oh, this stock, that stock. I text some of my friends, hey, look at this stock, look at that stock. And that's and, and it's how you evolve. I was just with my nine-year-old nephew, and he was asking me, you know, what's going on, uncle? And I'm like, oh, you don't watch the news. And then I, you know, to kind of like what we call pro coach to see if he really understands or he, and I said, nah, you know, a black man, he like, oh yeah, this, you're like, why are people upset? And I had to break it down to him. And I told him, I said, you may not understand this now, but understand that as, as a black young man, you're powerful and don't let nobody tell you. When you're All right. Read up on stuff, put your phone down, you know, ask questions. There's no such things as a stupid question. Ask right. question because you'll be surprised the answer that you get, and and I think and I think we need more of that um, in this world because sometimes we hinder ourselves. Yeah, hinder us. We hinder ourselves. Mm -hmm. We we'll have the other man. I, I want to say because I don't want to disrespect him. The other man, they're giving their yeah. company business, and then we got us because we're fighting over the, the 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 accidental death benefit that our auntie, our mom <laughs> left. No. And we're upset now because I didn't get a cut out of it. Dead left. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Mentor? The question is, what would what message would I have for the youth? For yeah, how do you explain how do you explain to our young black children what's going on and how to press forward? Well, um, June the 9th, I'm actually put in position to um to speak to a, a graduating class of 2020. Oh, yay! Congratulations! Yeah. They they wanted me. They were patient, and they got me. Nice. <laughs> right, and I gave them a discount. 
I'm like, listen, um, <laughs> and, and, and it, some gigs don't feel like gigs. Yeah. No, yeah. Some, some, some of them you want to do. Right, right. When I heard, you know, and, and my mind quickly went on everything that the class of 2000 lost. Mm. You know, farm nights and, and grad nights yeah. and this, that, third. And, you know, if they're like, if we could just have him, you know, spit a poem at like, what? Come on, man, you're getting a discount. Yeah. So I, <laughs> let's say that first. You know, I, I, I can't wait to um to share my gifts and talents with them because we all, you know, we're not perfect, right? Mm -hmm. God gave me the gift of poetry. So that's what I'm going to use to make my impact on the world. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be, you know, everything to everybody, but it's going to help somebody. For somebody, it's it's what they <laughs> need. Yeah. Right. Uh, now, my message to the youth would be this, because Carmen touched on this in the commercial. He said, never in the course of history have all the information you need is at the touch of your finger, right? Right? So look, that next inventor, that next famous chemist who can, you know, cure COVID-19 like that. <laughs> that, that. That next anything, <laughs> uh, fix it. Because the, the adults of 2020, Right now, I got the world fucked up. Let's just let's just call it what it is, right? Okay. So, class of 2020 and lower, everybody under them, right? My advice would be to fix it. I know you have the ability to fix it. You're, you're learning at a much more faster pace. Mm -hmm. How about that? And you're more daring too. More daring, more resources. More, not now. Now all you need is love. You got you. You got the mind now. Mm -hmm. you, you're you going to have that. And all you need is the love and some of that old school stuff that Joe was talking about. Let's um, let's hang out. Let's go fishing. In fact, that's what I'm issuing a challenge to all of us right here on this panel right here. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody, let's go fishing. You know why? You need to get to know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. Social media can only take you so far. Does it have to be fishing? Uh, that's a man thing, Alicia. Oh, okay. So I'm exempt. Woo! Made me but, nervous. But my point is, no, my point is this, right? Yeah. We're going on with Because we're, 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 we want to we wanna unite, right? We can't yeah. unite. Everybody's divided, right? right. So you got to be able to bond. Yeah. You got to be able to talk. It's you got so to be able to feel a person's aura. It's, it's essential. That you can't feel through the screen, because through the screen, you can get catfish, right? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Oh. That'll, that'll eliminate a lot of judgment, a lot of assumptions. Yeah. If, if, if we get together, talk, because that's that's something that we ain't doing as a community. Mm -hmm. up, right? That's why we're we're looting and rioting, right? We're like this. Oh, um, we got the injustice over here? Okay, let's burn mom and pop store now. Mm -hmm. Okay, this person got shot or, or wrongly convicted over there? Okay, mm -hmm. let's burn something else then. Stupid. Why is our solution so quick to burn it down? Wait a minute. Stop. Let's talk. Let's get to know each other. Maybe we can get to the root of what's wrong in a person's head. Yeah. Maybe. It, it takes effort and it, <laughs> it just takes take effort. effort. It, it takes going fishing. Miseducation. Yeah. I'll arrange something. I just, I just want to fishing, but at least I can't I just want to. I just want to piggyback off of the whole uh, Michael Jordan thing. I, and it, 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 I'm still on it because it irks me a lot when I hear people see, say Michael isn't saying anything. People don't realize that Michael's mm -hmm. major in college was cultural ge uh, geographics. Michael made, Michael made every black man in America understand that you're a brand. Right. <laughs> that That's you what create a brand. He doesn't need to do anything else other than I'm a brand. I'm a black owner. I left basketball to chase my dreams to go play baseball. You can do whatever you put your mind to. And if it doesn't work, go back to what you know. Still be successful. Black Michael Jordan made it to where his last years of basketball 
where we thought that he was being underpaid, he made sure he got everything that he needed out of the Washington Wizards, Washington Bullets, and he turned that money into ownership. He brought basketball back to North Carolina. He brought the Charlottes. He changed the name from Bobcats back to the Charlotte Hornets. That's what Michael Jordan did as a black man. He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to come out and speak on these things or donate money to it. He did all we need to do is understand that as a black man, you don't got to be Larry Bird. You don't got to be the white man that they harp. You could be Michael Jordan. You could be your own brand. Because when he started with Nike, nobody was wearing Nike. Everybody's wearing Converse's or Adidas. We all seen the show. And he made Nike a multi-million dollar company, a black man. Yeah, but who 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 is Nike? It, it's not it's not about Nike. It's Jordan now. It's Jordan Brand. The shoes you know, that as are you, the, as you say that, Jomo, what comes mm -hmm. into my mind is that scripture, and forgive me for not knowing the exact place, but it talks about knowing what's in your hand, mm -hmm. right? Whether you were whether God was going to use you to part the Red Sea whether it's a slingshot that he's going to help you use to defeat Goliath. Once you identify what is already in your hand, mm -hmm. I equate that to that being your gift or mm -hmm. a lot of times even your passion. Mm -hmm. And once you identify what that is, you use that because what's, he already gave you mm -hmm. what you need. That paired with him, mm -hmm. it's a wrap. So whether it's basketball, Jordan, or whether it's David and Goliath, mm -hmm. or whether it's taking on whatever task it is to overcome whatever obstacle, mm -hmm. the first step to that is identifying what's already in your hand. Because what's in your hand, Chris, is different than what's in Mark's hand, what's mm -hmm. in Jomo and Mentor's hand. But you got to identify first what's in your hand, or else you're going to be trying to play a game that you ain't got no business playing or Come fighting on. a fight that you ain't got no business fighting. Like, mm -hmm. you got to know what thing away. you're supposed to be in. So you can stay But Alicia, can I, can I say this one thing? Mm -hmm. With that being said, and one thing I, I, I agree with you, Joe, is that uh, uh, one thing I liked about the last dance is Michael mm -hmm. Jordan, like, look, I, I'm a basketball player. Like, I hate when people, like, I don't care when people say he's the greatest athlete. No, he's the greatest basketball player. That's all he is, is a basketball player. We, we I think sometimes we do put... Uh, uh, titles or we try to put responsibility on people like no that's not my job I, I, I would just now one thing uh looking at the last dance and being a basketball fan all that stuff that you said that Michael did I can't say he did it for a black man Michael mm -hmm. to me did it for Mike You're right mm -hmm. one, one thing that part. yeah one thing that I I learned from Mike is, is that, that he's about Mike yeah he's about me now now if good things come of it that's great but I'm all about me like, I, I tell everybody, you know, they try to uh, compare LeBron to Mike. I'm like, LeBron is a totally, mind, totally different mindset. Kobe, to me, was the closest person to Mike because Kobe, mind thinking was, if y'all don't get it together, I'm going to take it over. And Mike <laughs> thing was, I'm going to give y'all a chance. Y'all can't do nothing. I'm going to take it over, you know. <laughs> so I can't write. I can't. I don't. So I don't down him or need, you know, I mean, I have personal things I wish he would have done. But that's me putting my expectations on right. somebody like, man, if I had that power and that money, it's what I would have done. Well, that's what you would have done. Right. So I do catch myself. So I appreciate what you're saying. I do catch myself and putting that on expectation on other people. I always mm -hmm. say, man, you could have done so much more, but that's not what I want to do. You know, mm -hmm. so I do. So I, I respect that you did say that because I do need to be reminded of that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because pe people forget, and I thank you for that, uh, Mark, but people forget that Jordan... Nike hasn't produced a new Jordan shoe since 98. Everything that we're releasing is because yeah. like to that to the name of that shoe. Jordan is his own brand. So when we see these, the Carmelo Anthony's, the, the lady basketball players, the soccer players, brand Jordan, that's what he's putting out. All these retros that's coming out, that's because Nike has part ownership to that shoe. But my, as a smart black man, he's saying, okay, you want to release my shoe with my name on it, I get half of that. My issue is this. My issue with that is this, right? What's the sense? What's the sense in having a brand when who is making the most money off the brand? It's not him. It's Nike. And who is Nike? Who is Nike? 
Nike is the same oppressors. Nike is the same people who was back in apartheid. Reebok, all the stuff that we're jumping in. You get what I'm saying? What's the sense if he's not, he's not accountable for the black race? Mm. What's the point? What's the point? He has a brand. You have the, what, 200, 200 dollars for a pair of Jordans. You have guys out there killing, robbing, selling drugs just so they can wear Jordans and get some, um, whatever you call it. I forget what you call that word. You know, it's just a, oh, you got on new Jordans? You got on new Jordans? How is he helping? How is he helping anyone? How is he helping anyone? I don't care what brand he has. And success to me is not just financial. Success to me consists of more. You have to be moral. You can't have no moral vacancy to me and you're successful, right? That means you can be Kim Kardashian and you just do a sex tape and then you make you capitalize off the sex tape. But what's your, where's your morals? Where is it? Where is it? You're not successful to me. I don't look up on you. I don't look up to you. I don't look up to Donald Trump because he has a brand and because he has money. Because there's so much moral vacancy with him. Success right. to me is, is not only financial, it's spiritual as well. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of things besides that. So Michael Jordan right now, I don't rate him. I don't rate him because he got a brand. Because it's not helping us. All we're doing is jumping in his brand and supporting somebody who is not supporting us. Mm. Just like Versace, we're jumping Versace, we're jumping Gucci, we're jumping all these things. And these people said they don't want us in they there. They don't even want us in it. But yeah. this is how sick we are. But let, let a black brand come. Mm. It's self hate. You get what I'm saying? Self hate. Let me come with a brand tomorrow. You ain't jumping in it. I'll buy it, Chris. I must support it. Uh, it. Well, you know, just you, but yes, what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. But oh, that's man. my point. I don't, I don't rate Jordan like that, and I don't believe in the, the, the black people. I think black people need to be counseled. They need therapy. They need somebody to explain stuff to them because I don't believe in the term where they say, "Oh, pull yourself up by the bootstraps." We ain't got no boots. Yeah. Or strap. Right? Or strap. So so I'm going to pull it up. You but see, Chris, that's when that's when education comes into part because it's this is the stuff that they're putting in front of us. Uh, they're going to always put Kim Kardashian sex tape in front of us because that's to knock her down. But they're not going to take that. Kim Kardashian is one of the biggest people right now with prison reform. She's going into the prisons is trying to get these people that are have these charges out of prison, but you don't hear about that because they want to put in front of Kim Kardashian, Photoshop her body. Right. The biggest thing that I'm telling you that anybody, when Kobe said it best, without Michael, there will be no me. He made brothers understand that you don't have to just be a part of that. Oh, I got you. Get, money, get off and go make your own thing. Mm. But we're still asking him to do this after all these years where we have the same platform. Because Chris, how many people do you see a day when we're in the building? Yeah. No, but I get your point though. Yeah. I really get your point. I, I don't know if you can say we have the same platform though as a Michael Jordan, but I understand no, what you're saying. No, not the same platform, but if we tell 10 people, hey, you know, no, 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 Joe, listen. Hertz is at a dollar right now. Go go and get stock at Hertz. Those 10 people could turn to 20 people. 20 could go to 40. 40 no, go I, see, to I, see a I see a perspective now. No, mm. I see a perspective. I wasn't seeing it before. Mm. I, I'm seeing what he's done. Way to go, Mr. Glass, half full. <laughs> <laughs> That's Joe. <laughs> no, I really didn't see it before because I was looking, but now I'm listening to you and I actually see what he mm. has done um, indirectly. Yeah. Because, right. and, 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 and it's not your, it's not your fault, Chris. It's not your fault. That's what technology is putting out there. We're going to go back to the last dance. And I hate that this is about Michael Jordan. But in the last dance, people criticized Jordan because he was a tough leader. And, and every time I heard Jordan talk, I thought about my mom. Maybe come out to that school. 
bring home no C's. But you know what? I don't even think for me it wasn't him being a tough leader because I don't mind. A I tough don't. Yeah, I don't think he was a tough leader. I think he just wanted to make sure everybody saw their full potential. I Anybody who that. plays sports, I think mm-hmm. they understood. If you played mm-hmm. sports, you you wanted you had that coach or you had that superstar player that got in your face, and you understood what was on the line. I think, and and sports to me is just a way of. I mean that that puts so much, uh, uh, so many principles in your life on working hard, work through the pain, uh, start from the ground up. Uh, you know, uh, look towards something better. You know, work towards mm-hmm. something, have a goal. Sports have so many so many factions that helps uh, a person to achieve something more than what they got. But if you did, if you never played sports, like I love these analysts who never played sports before, you never played like, sports, right? right. Stephen A. Smith, right? You know the jokes. I'm like, man, y'all, yeah, y'all. Yeah, the, the, I don't know if it's the camaraderie uh, that gets me with Jordan, or I feel like he's not a, he's not a homeboy. Like he's not. I don't know. I feel like he was so much for self. Yeah, well, Joy was there for self, but he was there. He wasn't there to make friends. Joy, like I'm here for one reason, only that's to make championships. And if you are gonna play with me, you either gonna. One thing about Joy, and I always, I, I, as I, like, I'm a big basketball fan, and I wonder would I have folded or risen? Because Jordan is one of them players that make if you couldn't, yeah, if you couldn't stand the way that he played, because you know he was the man on the team. Mm-hmm. If you couldn't stand the way he played, you either folded and just never played or you became better like Scottie Pippen and these other players that played around him. So, so go ahead because I was about yeah. to use that in transition boy. That was no, no, go so ahead. go ahead. So yeah, so I, I just wonder how I would have played with someone because I played with a Jordan-ness type person but never mm-hmm. somebody who's on that level and spoke that much bullshit you know just really got <laughs> in your face. You ain't shit. You ain't shit. This is practice. You know yeah. so I, I wonder how would I have fared against playing with somebody like that? Would I have been better or worse? So Mentor? go ahead, Lee. Oh. Right into transition. Oh. Uh, oh, the mentor go. I, I love the comparisons and hate them at the same damn time. <laughs> <laughs> because because I, I see the division in the comparisons. That's that's one reason. But we're forced to look at it. Mm-hmm. But, and I understand why. I really do. It's entertaining. Now, Jordan was so great that Kobe like followed everything he did. He walked mm-hmm. like him. He stuck his tongue out and dunked like him. <laughs> he now. had no friends he, like him. Right. But he, he literally <laughs> tried to emulate this man. And he copied him the five championships himself. Mm-hmm. Is, is what ended up happening. That's just how great <laughs> Was. But to um the comparison stopped for me with LBJ and Jordan. We're hearing about uh what LeBron did with this school in Akron and yeah. seeing seeing what what he's offering them Come on that job placement for the parents. Come on now, guaranteed scholarships for guaranteed. all graduates. Unheard of. Uh, so, so the the mindset started to look way different to me. But I see a I see a dude who, like you said, he's a brand, straight up brand, right? Came mm-hmm. out with Jumpman to make some more money. You know what I mean? Jumpman was Jordan's answer to Nike. Like this is also just gonna be all me, all my profit, me, 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 me. <laughs> and when you looked at the uh, salary of the rest of the Bulls on the team. Let's take Pippen, for example. Six. The significance was drast- drastically different. Mm-hmm. So I was just wondering, Jordan, you know, did you have some offshore accounts? Did you give Scotty any Haynes underwear money? Anything. Did you give him any Space Jam money? Well, he definitely did, man. Every MVP, every MVP that Jordan won the finals, the cars that he won, he gave him all to Pippen. I, I, I was just hoping that he really took care of this. He, oh yeah, he took care. Yeah, it's historically known he took care of Pippen. When you look at it from a salary perspective, I was uh, yeah. It's so disrespectful. Yeah. But um, oh yeah, oh yeah. Because, but, but when you look at impact, <laughs> but because of of this one thing, LeBron is still playing. He mm-hmm. still has all time scoring leader in his grasp. Mm-hmm. He still has that and put that on his resume. He, he may not be able to catch Jordan in the championships. So be it. 
but you got something called rebounds, steals, mm-hmm. blocks. He could he could pad the stats up so much that nobody knows when he's really going to retire. Remember, you had to peel Brett Favre away from from the game. <laughs> he just mm-hmm. won't leave. So who knows what what day that is for him? Mm-hmm. And and even though Jordan, I, I I still have him at number one for me. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think LeBron eclipsed him yet. No, nah. <laughs> Jordan stopped Hall of Fame players from winning one ring. <laughs> so, so that speak for itself right there where you can stop a, a person's whole career like like Charles Barkley and Carl Malone look their whole career Ewing their whole career <laughs> just, just, Jordan's like we're not having none of it you're not getting any <laughs> and, and that's something that that, that LeBron that, that's what he missed in, in, mm-hmm. in, his, in his career but I hate to love comparisons at the same time and this is the last thing I'm going to say. I'm glad you said that, Mentor. And the question I want to ask is, do we think LeBron would have done all of this if his name wasn't just tarnished when he came to Miami and joined players instead of being the leader? Or if he stayed in Cleveland his whole career, do you think that LeBron would still be doing these things? I, I think LeBron had to go to Miami. I think he had to leave. I Because I, remember, he it was, to me, him coming out of high school, uh, he, uh, Cleveland, tried to make LeBron the the Michael Jordan of Cleveland. LeBron, if you all remember, they forced LeBron to start making those last second shots because LeBron was a passer. He wasn't a shooter. He was more of an assist, getting those other people involved. They told him, listen, you're the franchise player. You need to be the man on this team. I think LeBron had to learn how to – he had to get a, a winning mentality because Cleveland didn't have it. I think he had to learn that I can – make a team better. I can win a championship. Mm-hmm. And I think when he finished up with Wade and Bosch, he became a man. When he went by to Cleveland, I don't think if he had, if he had stayed in Cleveland, no, I don't think uh, he would have ever developed into the uh, – as far as basketball-wise, I don't think he would have ever developed into the LeBron we see today. You know, this ESPN break was – um. <laughs> Fantastic, and yeah. <laughs> I really appreciate the insights. Hey, Alicia, um, we appreciate you letting us get that out because we saw I, you just sitting there. I knew, you there. To. I, knew I, I felt it all on your. T- I knew you needed to get I it out. Like I was on the ESPN panel. Yeah, like, for the first time in my life, I felt like I was actually in ESPN on the panel. Yeah. But leash, it was a well, it, well you're welcome. You know, I'm glad bigger, that I could provide that type of environment where you got closer to your dream of being on ESPN. You know, you never knew who's gonna call you after this. Just never forget me. But leash, the bigger picture was I, we, we talked about sports, but it goes back to the top. It goes back to it, yeah. Strong as a black man, because all we talked spoke about was black men. Mm-hmm. Is that once again, anything you put your mind to, and who was behind. LeBron and Jordan, they mamas. Mm-hmm. Strong mothers. You saw it all through the show. His mom. He asked his mom. You know, he lost his dad, fell back to his mom. LeBron was there all even when she could, she had to work jobs and he was a top player. Just to make sure he still was able to go to school and live up to the bill, she made sure of that. So it's still on topic of understanding in this world, in this society, and forever, years and years and centuries to go. We're still as powerful as the other person. Yeah, yeah. It's it's really it's really unlocking your potential. Um, and I'm curious to know because we talked a lot about like who the leaders were and um, what it looks like to kind of rise to the table, if you would, or just rise to the calling. Um, like, who are your leaders, and like, what does all of this make you want to do differently? I'll start with um, me, actually. I'll start with me. So <laughs> I, I'll be honest, like this week, um, I, I really wanted to look into putting my money in a Black-owned bank. Um, I don't have a lot of it right now, but <laughs> when, <laughs> you know, when it, it means something to me to being that we're the number one consumers and we're only a small fraction of the entire United States population. Um, moving our assets or moving our finances 
to a black owned bank. Um, I don't know what will come about that, but I'm willing to try it because right. it, it's a move. You know what I'm saying? It's something different and it's supporting ours. And um, yeah, I don't want to elaborate. What's, a, what's a bank called in Miami? Uh, bank One. Bank One. Okay. There it is, yeah. Everybody got that? And I have a list of them on my site as well in case folks are watching in and you're in different areas. There are Black-owned banks across the United States, um, Texas, Chicago, they're all over. Please. Uh, yes. But, um, but outside of that, it made me want to have more conversations. It made me want to be more vulnerable sooner. You know, um, it made me want to connect um, more often. So that's what all of this is making me want to do because I don't have all of the right answers. And, you know, we're in an interesting time where circumstances are really trying to isolate us and really trying to make us become islands. And that's not what we were created for. We were literally created for community. Um, we were literally created to be together and if i can be a part of that i would really love that so i'll jump to chris yeah i'll just piggyback on that um um one leader um that i would say that i look up to even though people refer to him as an uncle tom is um booker t washington because mm -hmm. while he was doing all his stuff um he was establishing the Tuskegee, the whole agriculture, teaching us how to, so that's pretty much the start for our economic base. So I'm pretty much just piggybacking off what you said because I agree with 100% with what you just said. And that's what I was, that's my thoughts. Mm. So you can move on now to oh. or somebody. Mark. <laughs> oh, man, that's a good question. Uh, I, I've, uh, man, I would say just really pulling the youth together, mm. really uh, educating them on uh, the, going back to the miseducation, just really educating our youth to doing a better job than even what they did with us. Mm. I know my mom and dad, uh, they <laughs> did the best they could with what they had. Yeah. But I think our generation and maybe the generation after us will be the most informed, uh, insightful generation of Blacks mm. ever. And if we don't take these PS4s, PlayStations, Xbox, mm. and these uh, phones out of their hand, they either can become one of the best, the greatest minds ever, or be or more uh, uh, caught up in BS than anybody. Programmed. Yeah, program. Thank you, thank you. And that—that's what I would. If I had, if I could do anything, pull the youth together and just really just pound it in them on what they're facing or what their uh, what their future could look like. Yeah. Joe. Um, the greatest leader, I would say, I'll probably say my dad. Hmm. He's not here with us today. Unfortunately, he was killed in Jamaica. Uh, the reason why I say he was the greatest leader is because my dad got me, got made sure, got me to America from prison. My dad saw a better life for me in America and sent for me. Had me living with strangers, but he saw the bigger picture. He saw the better lifestyle. Now he might, might have made some bad mistakes in life, but it was every mistake he made was to provide for his family. Mm. Make sure that no matter what, I don't grow up trying to emulate nobody. Mm anyone so that's the one thing that he that he instilled in me and i could definitely um i could definitely say that man he was one of the greatest leaders to me and he didn't say we didn't we didn't really talk much but his actions is what i is what i soaked up and you'll see my dad my dad is going to stand out in the crowd one of the, i'm gonna be honest with you one of the biggest drug dealers in the midwest when i came from jamaica the first state i came to was denver colorado but he got me to where he was and although I would go visit him and he was in prison, as soon as he got out, the first place he came, no matter where I was, was to me. Mm. 
that's a hero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent, man. I, I like I like to open up the perspective of the question, if you don't mind. Meaning, um, it's hard to pick one because it, you. It's great leaders, like like one person said about you know the president might not be able to fix that pothole on the same street where your kids go to school at, but your commissioner might be able to fix it, <laughs> right? So you, it's it's a few mayors, commissioners, um, state senates uh, that because of them being in politics, folks are gonna look at them with an evil eye. But you can tell who's actually trying to maximize the power that they have. You can tell who's, you know, putting forth at least some type of effort towards us, for us. You know, um, I've gotten to know a lot of people personally uh, performing and doing shows at a lot of different venues. Um, and um, the White Bullet, is a, is a is a great leader that come to mind. Chevron Jones is a great leader that come to mind. Nancy Mateo up in Coral Springs is a good leader that comes to mind. Um, Valencia Gunda down there in Miami. It's it's, it's so many great leaders to where um, you see the co you see the combination of the good mm -hmm. that come from a bunch of different um, people applying their leadership because everybody on this panel right here is a leader, man. You know, my stage name might be mentor, but you know, I'm definitely not the only leader. I'm trying to create more leaders because it's not a job for one person. That's right. it. You put it you put anybody on one pedestal. Why do you think the president is catching so much slack? It's because any president that's sitting in that seat is gonna catch some slack. Uh, I don't care who you are, because everybody's gonna see that as okay, wow, it don't get no bigger than that as mm -hmm. far as leadership. No, man. Leadership is, if you're, are you a father? You're a father? You're a leader, man. You're a leader. <laughs> Teachers, oh man, the, the amount of parents understanding what teachers are, uh, have been going through all this time now. Listen, pay is, them whatever it, they want. Right in front of everybody's faces now because of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So. It's a ton of teachers are who are exceptional leaders, man. You got people who are working around the clock and they ain't trying to be seen. They just setting the right example quietly. Yeah. Now are they perfect? Nope. <laughs> you follow a camera, you put a camera on a leader. Pick the greatest leader you can find. Now put a camera on them for 48 hours. Mm. You're gonna be like, shit, I need to pick another leader. Yeah. You know? I don't, I don't like the way he did that booger. He went way too far up in there. <laughs> yeah. Basically, if you dig for a booger, you're going to find something. <laughs> <laughs> so let, we, we don't have to put no leaders on pedestal. I think what, what, what we should do, though, is um, acknowledge that local leader, that, that local mayor, that local principal. Mm. You know, it's a principal, uh, Carroll City Middle School's principal is phenomenal, if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do our own version of honor. Like, CNN heroes. What'd you say, Chris? You know, you know, they have CNN heroes. Let's oh, yeah. Version of that. Yeah, yeah. They, they pick up the local heroes and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So that's so last question, like I, like we started off the call with, there's a lot going on. Um, there's a lot going on. How can we better support you as black men? How can we better support you during this time? Oh, women? Yes. Yes. I'm nervous to say Stop. yes. I'm like, oh, yes. Making us pay for everything. <laughs> Anyone else? Just a start. Just a start. That is let let us let us take care of our kids. Some of us have child support to pay, not me, but some of us have child support to pay, and we need to pay it. Stop pressuring us to pay for your freaking food. 
And you know, you, you know you make, some of you make six figures, some of you make over $60,000 a year. Why you need me to buy your food? You just... <laughs> that's, that's a start. Thank you. Anyone else? How can we better support you during COVID and the, you know, just the colorful week that we've been having? I think just communication, talking about it, uh, especially, you know, I think sometimes uh, we have stuff on our mind, and I mean men and women. Uh, if you're in a, a relationship, I think each one needs to support the other if you're in a, uh, you know, two black people in a relationship during this time to just, hey, uh, at the end of the day, hey, what's on your mind? What happened to you at work today? And that's, yeah. uh, you know, I know growing up, you guys were talking about, uh, leaders and I thought about my mom. I'm like, why didn't I think about my mom? Like, really, my mom was a, the best leader I've ever seen one woman to do. I remember our saying at Comcast, uh, Alicia and Chris, I don't know if you all remember, we do so much with so little that we can do almost anything with nothing at all. <laughs> and that was that was something that uh, I saw in my mother. So um, to uh, so, so, yeah, I, I don't know why I didn't think about her in that time. But anyway, just communication at the end of the day, asking each other, hey, so what was your day? How, what happened? Anything affect you? You want to talk about it and not hold it in? Just communicate. Uh, open okay. up at the dinner table. Hey, let's, you know, let's talk. There's been yeah. a lot of stuff. Like right now, it's the, the stuff that's been going on, Alicia, and I would love that list that you had, Alicia, because I didn't, uh, yeah, half that stuff I didn't know about. Mm -hmm. But I think each one need to just come together and like, hey, there got to be something. There's no way this week could have went by and you have not been and affected. And you're not being agreed. Yeah, so if, if you're not affected by what's been going on this week, there's there's some deep issues we need to talk about. Because you're holding you're something in. you're part of the problem. And you're yeah, part either you're part of the problem, Chris, or you're the person that's going to blow up and shoot 10 people in the shopping mall. Yeah. Right. So you're holding it all in. So I think communication. Communication at the end of the day, uh, every day, just, hey, Let's talk okay. about what happened to your day today. Yeah, for sure. Joe, you're muted. Oh, hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I think understand understand what the what team represents. Um, team is not part time. Team is not uh three fourths of the time. Team is not a quarter time. Team is 24 seven, 365. Mercy. Yeah, don't, don't, you know, and it sums up basically what everyone is saying. You know, like Chris said, if you're making six figures, don't look for a man to pay for your meal. Sometimes, 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 you know, you can pay for the meal. And it's not that they're less of a man, but it's like, okay, baby, you know, this is on us. Mm -hmm. And there's some women out there that understand that, but there's some women out there that they only want team part time. Mm. Time gets you nowhere. And you see a lot of time you see it now going on and it's um being locked up in the house that a lot of marriages a lot of relationships are getting you know broken up or getting crazy because now i see that we were never a team mm. Mm. you know you, you it's only beneficial when it benefits you mm. but i need it to be beneficial when it benefits us because yep. we are a unit Stop being self-centered. <laughs> you're putting pressure on us. It sounds it's yes. so trivial, but mm -hmm. you're putting pressure. Don't make me feel like I'm not a man because I'm not doing all this stuff. Listen, you watch too much music videos. Not everybody's a baller. <laughs> okay, we're out here. We're struggling. We're doing for the kids. Don't worry. Try to be a unit. Yeah. Stop being such a, and like you said, um, the first session, Joe, outside influence. Mm -hmm. That's your problem. Where mm -hmm. did it take you? I hear somebody said in the comments, Subway. You're too light. You're not going to Subway. Nobody not <laughs> Because your friend's going to ask where you take it. And you're going to say yep. Subway. And you're going to be yep. like, what kind of man is that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Mentor. How can we better support you during this time? 
Oh, Lord, y'all really picked a bad time for me to ask this question. <laughs> what does support look like for you? Uh, Lord, I don't know where to start. I'm trying to, like, you know, figure it out myself. I don't want to beat a dead horse either because Joe and Chris kind of nailed you know, pretty much the question. Mm. <laughs> and, um, you know, I don't want to repeat certain things, you know, just because I'm feeling that way too. So, um, but listening is, is, is a good answer for, for, for damn near every question. You know, we, we, men and women need to do more listening mm. because listening is comprehension. And comprehension is what? informed education once you get with the misinformed and miseducated not not everything is is, is, is out of oh, way no. yeah but it actually kind of start with listening because you don't learn anything new or able to correct something without hearing it out first I, I'm, I'm guilty of it you're guilty of it too i see you i got ready. a question this is a question from someone in the chat who possibly might be writing this as we speak okay so listening it takes talking for someone to to listen so okay. what would be your advice to maybe men who to women who have men who don't talk or who don't open up. They're willing to practice listening, but- um, That's a but, cop out. I'm, 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 I'm no, it's, it's a, it, it's a real, it's a real there thing. There was it's a, a real thing. There like there's a, a lot of men that don't talk. Leash, like, there's, there's a, a time when they spoke, Leash. Leash, there's a time when they spoke, Leash. What'd you say? Small talk would be my advice. Meaning, you got you you gotta catch them at the most randomest moments. You see how we all just had an entertaining conversation and, and it felt like ESPN? Right. That's how you really That's how you got it. You see that dolphin, you see that dolphin shirt on Mark? Mm -hmm. That's how you reach a man. Yeah. You gotta find out what this dude like. He may not like salsa dip. He might like cheese dip when he's watching the game. It'd be the most minorest details to where he'll look at it and then he'll go, baby, how'd you know that? How'd you know I like that? Ah, now you got his ears open. See where I'm coming from now? So so the smallest, the the the, the attention is in the detail. The secret is in the detail. So if you're paying attention. I, 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 would, I would ask another question because it, it, it's a lot of variables involved in this. Um, it depends on how long you've been with the guy. Mm -hmm. How long have you been with the guy and he's not listening? If you just got with somebody, yes, you're gonna work out the kinks and you're gonna say, okay, this is how I get to her, this is how I get to her, this is how I, this is how I spark her interest. This is mm -hmm. the attention getter that I'm gonna use. Now, what if you're with the person forever? What does that mean? Are you still, that means you've been trying a lot of stuff. So that just simply means you need to find a new man. Mm. Because compatibility to me, <laughs> no compatibility to me. compatibility. Is why you gotta why you gotta single out me? Like, <laughs> into his face. <laughs> well, like that. <laughs> okay, so obviously we're going into part four. Um, so Alicia, hold on. Before you go there, I, I will say this. Now I just recently had a, a well, not recently. I have a friend. Uh, my age, um, he's, he's a hearer and not a listener. And uh, so to your question, who have asked that about, what about a man who don't talk? And I don't know about you guys, but I have plenty of friends who don't talk. I mean, talk to what, because as we're speaking about stuff that the woman should be able to understand us. But we also have to understand that I got a woman at home who's going to ask me, how is my day going? And I know she's not asking Physically, how is my day going? She's asking, how am I doing? Mm -hmm. And I don't want to talk about that. So I just like, mm -hmm. she needs to understand me. I need to understand that when she asks that question, what is she really asking? Because she ain't really trying to, 
find out how, what did I do? You know what I do on my job. Every day I do the same thing. So you right. ain't asking that. Yeah. I need to be able to also sit down and say, all right, babe, as much as it maybe kills me to do it, I need to be able to sit there and also stimulate her mind. Yeah. So, you know, we, we keep saying that we want them to know us and need to be able to cater to us and understand us. And But, right. okay, now, who's going to feed them? Because, oh. you, you know, there's always somebody out there who will feed them. You know, hey, baby, t- tell me how your day went. No, t- talk to me. So right. I think we also have to listen or be able to hear the women and be able to give and get. You know, when they say, uh, uh, people say it's a 50-50 in a relationship. No, it's not. It's 100 a 100 you know, right. I got to give you all of me and you give me all of you. If I'm only giving you 50 of me, then where's the other 50 going? <laughs> so right. going somewhere. So I, I so that's that's my answer. <laughs> that's my answer to that, is that we also oh. have to be able to cater to a woman and, and make sure we are giving them what they're desiring also. Absolutely. As we're expecting them to get from us. Absolutely. It's a unit. Dear mm-hmm. Mark, the person yeah. in the chat says thank you. <laughs> All right, so obviously this needs to be part four because we didn't transition from looting to uh, Jordan to <laughs> relationships to, but all in all, um, I think it was good to check in um, mm-hmm. whether or not um, we could never unpack everything on one of these, yeah. but. I feel like with each one we get closer and we get better. Um, mm-hmm. Again, I okay. cannot thank you all enough for your willingness, your flexibility, your vulnerability, because we know nowadays, you know, people are talking less, they're interacting less. And the fact that you all are taking out time to let me in, to let our people in, you know not only is it bettering the lives of other people, but I pray that it blesses you all in return. So um, I can't thank you guys enough. And for the folks that are tuning in, listening in, that are gonna follow later and catch the video on replay, sharing it, commenting, you all were very much a part of this conversation too. We thank you guys for your comments, your involvement. Um, and just coming to the table with us because that's where we unpack a lot of what we've been carrying. So um, I could go on forever with this, but um, I won't. And until next time, Mentor, you got something for us? Yes, I do. Um, You know, some pieces, you only need to write them once. And you'll see a replay over and over again in the news. You wouldn't have to write it no more. So that's that that happened with that piece that Chris didn't even know came out of his mouth. Both that came out of his mouth and Red the Blue Pill came out of his mouth. Messed my head up. <laughs> that, that was the piece I was gonna do tonight. And again, it's the same. When we all wore black, when it's just like no communication, but it's a it's a link somewhere that's making all of us relevant. So you went to Blue Magic, you may have heard this before, but this is my way of uh, introducing, you know, everybody to the revolutionary poet in me. So here we go. <clears throat> Our purpose is Bigger than our problems, we better act like we know. They got the right one though. I'm a revolutionist, minus the Afro with the black fist attached to the Afro pick. African-Americans pick up guns a little too quick. Hitting the whole strolls for a little trick. It's a complex fascination with big guns and big dicks. Since when do we murder for kicks? These are the same people that won't enlist in the military, creating another fatherless child from positions of missionary. Now this cycle is keeping us stationary, spending all of our money on everything that's temporary, speaking fluently in the language learned from a niggerary. Mm-hmm. It's our very own made-up dictionary. 
Ebonics 101 in this form of education is scary. These classes are insane in ghetto sanctuaries. Training our little girls to drop it like it's hot and become Beckys and teaching our boys to start a brotherhood rooted in jealousy. Permanently embedding in our minds the crab in a bucket mentality and it be holding us down like sailboats drop anchors in. And keeping it real often gets confused with keeping it gangster. Misunderstanding the two kills you slowly like cancer. Like the house niggas and field niggas passed down by our ancestors, Willie Lynch's playing the game of chess, and we only know checkers. Across the world, they fear this race, but I want them to respect us. It's like we don't know ex our own strength, and, and this is exactly how they get us to invest all 100% of what we got into the don't believe me, just watch, nigga, 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 how hip-hop got transformed to the exact opposite of a poet, and, and we don't even know it. We don't even know it. We so different, we so different, we need to pull out if we don't wanna raise children. Pull out some protection if the condom's missing. Pull up our pants, dignity's missing. Pull each other up instead of this hate and division. Middle finger up to the slave system. I pray for wisdom and got understanding and what my understanding of the situation is, most of these rappers now sell dope, slangs coke, brags about keeping their pistols busy and gun smoke, on probation, walking a tight rope, and bragging about how much duffel bags of money we can tote. Listen here, the picture's crystal clear for self-destruction, and Lord, is in a crisis state in 2020. I mean, we, we got to come up with something, funeral after funeral, and wake after wake. I hope George Young wakes us up. We're down to nothing but government assistance and free health care for the HIV recipients who, who needs it, of course. But the problem is they're trying to get all of us to ride out on that same horses as long as our numbers are subtracting and not multiplying. And the end result is we're dying or in prison for pedophiling or staying and staying turned up until we're burnt up from styling and profiling and keeping the black man responsible for keeping the black woman crying and Supplying our neighborhoods with neighbors up to no good and infested with junkies walking around asking everybody who got that good. Well, are you good? Who where can I go to get some of that good? Right <laughs> down the street, that thing over there be so good. It's the best fire in the hood. Enough to make you just quit your job and just retire in the hood. That good, good, right? It's all good, right? Well, they got Molly's ecstasy and some cocaine, right? Now that thing be flammable like gasoline and propane, right? Oh, it's taking us out of the game, right? It used to be about just Mary Jane, but now it ain't even the same, right? Oh, oh, oh I know the white man is to blame, right? <laughs> well, we might as well blame Saddam Hussein for why we backwards and ain't right. Now this situation ain't drastic until I'm in the casket, right? Since I ain't shit, I might as well not even be average, right? Since George Zimmerman keep getting off, I might as well still live my life ratchet, right? You do know it's sad that I got to be sarcastic, right? Right. Open up your third eye. As I blow out a, uh, a candle by my sister in rhyme, May Rain, Y'all gotta get y'all the moonflower candle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, nice. Yeah. It was written, fellas. Hmm? Gotta be fulfilled. It was written, fellas. Yeah. Everything we're doing right here and when we do it and how often we do it. Listen, I love this show. You hear me? Mm -hmm. They take this show away from me, I'll just die. Yeah. <laughs> Alicia, Alicia, that's that's pressure for you to keep this show going. We don't oh, want mentoring dude. dying. We do right. not. Right, I'm like, die. shoot, okay. <laughs> pressure. Yeah. Go to the most extreme. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, fellas, it's always a pleasure. Until next time. Everyone tuning in, thank you so much. Y'all got something you want to say to your, to the viewers? No, I would like to say no more with comments. What did you say? 
One more. Oh, I let my man take me to Subway comment. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what you got? Uh, actually, I was just gonna. I, so I, I look at the. Uh, so as we're talking, I'm looking at the. Uh, the they're putting uh, uh, whoever is watching. So I want to say what's up to Miss Melinda George, who I've not seen since I left Florida. So to, so want to say hi to her. Aww. And uh, to my brothers, man. Uh, no matter your origin, uh, no matter what your, uh, your where you derive from, I think one thing Chris has made it clear: we all came from one source. Mm -hmm. that Yahweh Elohim, whatever name you call him, know that there's only one creator and we're all looking to him for salvation and look to him for strength and peace and to have a peace of mind during these times is a is, is uh, that's gold yeah, it's gold so uh, to all the listeners, uh, Alicia thank you for giving us this format we listen mm -hmm. to some other brothers listen to, listen to some other points of views on situations that I thought I had square in my mind, but uh so I appreciate you having this uh, platform for us to kind of throw our, our uh, thoughts out to the wind. And hopefully cool. somebody's listening and grab it. Yeah. For, for anybody. Go ahead, Mentor. For anybody out there listening, if you're going to um, pick a protest or find a way to, um, to express your freedom, your frustration, and, and the change that you want to see in the world, my advice would be to first select something that makes sense. If it makes sense, then go 100% hard at it. Don't just see, you know, the majority of your friends going hard at something and then just join in without really finding out uh, why they're doing what they're doing. Yeah. So that, that's, that's my final word. Good one. Joe, you want to close this out? Um, uh, two things. Uh... You got to have strong mental, man. Uh, a lot, a lot of us uh, lack strong mental. If you lack strong mental, a lot of things you want to achieve in life. But if you continue telling yourself and believing yourself that you could do it, you're gonna be on top of the world. And another thing, um, this is from uh, I like I, I I listen to music a lot, and it's something that I always say to a lot of people. Um, Beanie Siegel said this. You know, a lot of you guys know this 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 the song "Feel It in the Air." You know, he said, uh, read their body language, 85% communication, nonverbal, 85% swear they know you. The 10% they stories, the other five, time will show you. Just, just know you. You pull the strings, you the puppet master. So watch who you puffing after. Fuck the mother bastards. Shoot for the moon. If you miss, you're still amongst those stars. Hmm. Oh, mentor, mentor, what you gonna do, Joe? Joe just threw no, it up the no, no, no. <laughs> Woo, <laughs> Joe, Joe, that was heavy. Joe, that was heavy. No way. No, my favorite <laughs> song is the one that did with Jay Z. You know what I'm talking This can't mm -hmm. be like. Oh, yes. yeah, this can't be like. This is why we need to go fishing, Joe. This is why we can't be life. This can't be us. Oh, I'm down. I just want to open up for you, mentor. That's it. We, uh, I, I would love for all of us to link up one day, man. That's all. Definitely. Sure. When is your next show? When are you doing another show, like an open, open or something? Um, I, in October, I, I'll invite you guys down to um to my, the Miami Gardens area, man. It's my same sister in rhyme, May Rain. She has a show um, nice. called Ink. Called ink therapy. Mm -hmm. Oh, Deep thing, mm -hmm. ink therapy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, we'll make it a trip. Hey, listen, I'll, mentor. Uh, mentor I, I would love, I would love to watch that though. Mentor, send it in the and the and the chat. Yeah, yeah. yeah what well, people are still on social distancing now. It's a lot of venues that just simply are not open yet. But as the months go on, man, I'm gonna definitely update each and every last one of you. Please. Mm -hmm. But right now, it ain't mm -hmm. open. Ain't <laughs> Not where I went last night. Like, class of twenty twenty, they they want to hear something, so I got. It. And also, right. uh, one thing, man, that a lot of us don't do that we and we know a lot of people that don't do it. Don't be, don't pride, don't put your pride in the way, man. Get on your knees, say a prayer. Mm. Yeah, you'll open a lot of doors. That's mm. real, man. Mm. Tell us. Thank you. You look full, Alicia. I look full. <laughs> yeah, thank you. 
Alicia, you done had a new hairdo every episode. I have uh, not. Yes, you okay. have. Yeah, you have. You guys didn't realize that she monetized this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one day. One, mm -hmm. you know what? Maybe you prophesying, Chris. One day. Podcast, right, here guys. we come. <laughs> yep. All right, guys, you guys be so, good. And then we and then we pulling up in suits <laughs> on the red carpet. Right. You got to see it before it yes. happens. You got to see yes. it before it happens. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, I don't know if you guys noticed at one point Alicia just had her head on her hand like this, like she's just a proud parent. And I said, Look at her, she's just enjoying herself. She's just in a. I said, She's looking so proud. So, I yeah, thank and you. you. <laughs> Shaq, Shaq and Tent, Shaq and Kenny and Charles, and they swear they got a show. They swear they got <laughs> Okay. Yeah, tell Kenny, Chuck, <laughs> tell them all we're coming for him. That's right. <laughs> Bye, guys. Have a good night. All right. Bye. <laughs> you guys be good. Definitely.